I believe we're live. It's always difficult to goddamn tell with YouTube these days. It is. But I think we're here. People will yell at us if we're not, so that's good. Fantastic. All right. I am here with my uh, good friend, Sargon of Akkad, to talk about the female space marine question, or the non-question. The, the latest iteration. Yes. And the weakest one by far, actually, I find. Oh, yeah. Like, okay. Um, so I'm going to do a plug here for my good boy Sargon, because he made an excellent think piece on this, actually. Uh, Deep Think Special, The Politics of One of the 40K. There'll be a link in the description below as well to the Lotus Eaters website. Where you went into depth, not just about the female space marine question, but about leftist politics in 40K. And it's an excellent piece as well. But, but also about the nature of a story, um, which I think actually is kind of uh, what the Templin Institute chap seems to not understand. Uh -huh. And I remember you asked me to dig up the original piece of fluff, uh, which stated there was only male space marines. I did. And I had to go... <laughs> the, the thing is, back then, nobody thought about this shit. Like, it... Why it wasn't they? a thing that was focused on. Why would they? Who, who would care about this? You know, at, at no point in like the eighties did any of the nerds playing war games think, "Oh yeah, we'd better think this through." Exactly. So it was such a throwaway line; it was barely included since. But we found yeah. it, and it is again incontroversial. It's males only. Simple yeah. as. It's... And like, it's not anything that a normal person would spend any amount of time worrying about why would you care yeah of course of course the elite soldiers are just men obviously yeah absolutely like it wouldn't even make sense even if they had the technology to make female space marines to make female space marines no but i'm sure we'll cover this in in detail as we go along absolutely so I do uh, highly recommend that think piece. It's nice and chunky too, at an hour fifty four minutes. Yeah, I, it took me ages to record the bloody audio of that. <laughs> Long form content, my dude. That's the best kind of content. Yeah, and the thing is, there was so much to cover because it's not just about female space marines; it's about like, you know, everything really. Yep, it is everything, and it's the the integrity of it as well, and why they would like to attack it. Yeah. So we've got our little watch together room here. Uh, you've got the pause and play button too, Sargon, right? Mm-hmm. I believe so, yeah. All right. Well, without further ado, I suppose we'll just uh, dive into it. Though, I, I will say this too, right? In a way, like, this feels almost like milking the drama, you know? Because I've done, like three videos on this now. Uh, one on the politics of the female space marine, why they are doing this, and of course, mm -hmm. on this goddamn awful video too. Yeah. But the thing is, gatekeeping is not a one-and-done thing. Like, this topic has yeah. been popping up in 40k since eons ago, and it is yeah. continuously repeated ad infinitum. Yeah. So it is That's, very important this... to know why. Yes, and th this is the, the eternal uh, point about gatekeeping. Uh, they only have to be successful once. You have to be successful every single time. So, you know, they, they just need to catch you with your guard down just once, and then they've got it. Absolutely. The moment female space marines are canon, digging That's that it. back out again is going to be next to impossible. Yeah. The cannon must therefore be defended. Absolutely. All right. Well, whatever let's, you're ready. Uh, start then. God, these bloody fancy graphics. <laughs> yeah, the presentation is very nice. It is very nice. You've got to give them credit. The process of transforming a new recruit into a warrior of the Adeptus Astartes is among the most challenging and complex operations that the Imperium of Mankind is still capable of performing. It remains a dangerous procedure, with many of its underlying principles barely understood 
and even an otherwise healthy applicant might suffer from unpredictable mutations or other adverse effects on their physical, mental, or spiritual well-being. According to those familiar with the process, the first requirement of any Space Marine applicant is that they be biologically male. But this has understandably led to the question, why? Why are there no female Space Marines? I mean, he's just explained it, right? Yes. He, he has just explained, this is an incredibly difficult and dangerous procedure, and so why would we bother trying it on people who are just simply not as strong as the alternative? What would yeah. be the point? Wait, okay. I, in ideal circumstances, the failure rate is already tremendous. Yeah. So why would we do this? When the, why would we voluntarily increase the failure rate? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's an incredibly resource-intensive procedure. So why would we? It doesn't make any sense. And of course, when he says, well, it understandably raises the question why they're not no actually it's it's not understandable and you have to explain why you think there should be female space marines and what rationale you would use and the rationale is of course well the feminism yes and again i, I want to stress the resource intensity of this as well because not only is this mm. major surgery requiring tons of additional organs it requires gene seed Gene seed is the single most precious resource in the entire Imperium. You don't just throw that like shit they, away. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's not like they can waste it, and it's 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 not frivolous. That's the point, isn't it? You know, this is the least frivolous thing, and he is asking, well, why isn't this just available to everyone? It's like, well, the the, the answer is in the question, isn't it? Yeah, it is an incredibly valuable resource. Let's recess this window a little bit yet. There we go. Not to mention as well, again, I, I can't I cannot stress this point enough. Gene seed, each space marine can only produce two of them under optimal circumstances, right? There, there's hmm. there is no reserves of this that can be just thrown away. This is the the yeah. chapter's entire future here. It is the genetic material of their Primarch and their god. Hmm. It makes no sense materialistically, logically, or in canon for there to be female space marines. Not to mention as well, most of the chapters recruit from death worlds, right? With very small human populations, relatively speaking. What would be the point of taking away females, the people making more people, from the already vanishingly small stock of eligible recruits? Well, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever, but of course... That's why he has to explain why the question has come up. Mm -hmm. The official line on the matter is that the process by which space marines are created relies inherently on the hormonal and biological makeup of the human male, meaning that only males can be subjected to the transformation. Ah, okay, so there it is. Case closed, right? There are no Ye female space marines. Yeah, that's that's exactly it. Case closed, right? Because no, no, the uh, the way he frames this, it the official line. What does that mean? That means there is an official. That means there is an absolute authority. That what we what he he'll later say. Well, there's no such thing as objective uh, morality or obj an objective view on the universe. But the thing is, there is, and he's appealing. He's he's recognizing that right now, right? And we know there is, because, of course, the objective authority on the Warhammer 40,000 universe is Games Workshop. They get to say, this is and this is not. It's the way it is. And the, the appeal to saying, well, there's no objective um, concept or morality or understanding of the, the real universe, that is actually because there is no god of the real universe, as far as we can prove. Now, I'm not, I'm not trying to get into a theological debate, of course, over this. But um, but this is his perspective. You know, there's no God, therefore, it doesn't... Uh, it, it, the universe is down to interpretation. Morality is down to interpretation. There is no simple sacred doctrine that we can appeal to in order to say this is and anything else is not. But the thing is, and re referencing my uh, deep think here, this is what Ernst Gombrich uh, pointed to as the... The each each uh, fictional universe, every everything that is fantastical that we engage in, he calls a micro universe, 
And actually, there are authors to these things. And so there is a right and a wrong to these things. And actually, that means that we can identify the god of the micro-universe and, most importantly, divine their intentions, as in they can give us a concrete and undoubted statement as to correct and incorrect within the bounds of the micro universe that is the fictional world of warhammer or whatever it is uh so ha this is this is why jk rowling uh could come on twitter and say hey actually did you know that actually dumbledore was gay there's not necessarily anything in the harry potter universe as written to indicate it but her being the god of the harry potter universe means that she can at any point make these kind of declarations and okay, it's cringe, but fair enough. Go fill your boots, JK. You know, no one's going to stop you. It is, after all, your universe and you are God. And so, actually, we can objectively say there is a right and wrong when it comes to this. And we, know, we can name the authors. We know exactly what their intentions are. And we know exactly what their statements were. So that is the end of the story, really. Yes, because... His later argument will be essentially that the universe is filled with propaganda, right? Which mm -hmm. to an extent is correct. But when we are reading a story, a Gaunt's Ghost book or a Cyphus Kane or Horus Heresy book, we are not mm -hmm. viewing that from the perspective of an imperial scholar. We are viewing that from mm -hmm. the perspective of God. We are the, the unseen yes. watcher in the room. And more, more importantly as well, the, uh, the statements we have are not done from within the perspective of the 40k universe which i mean don't get me wrong i'd be you can exactly and if if there were if we were extrapolating from statements made from within the 40k universe by characters of the universe who lived within it his argument might actually hold some weight but it doesn't we're taking statements directly from the writers of the 40k universe mm -hmm. outside of the canon itself explaining the canon they're the ones who have told us this. It's just not for debate. No. <laughs> it really genuinely isn't. Which is also why this this topic that will not disappear is such... It is such ludicrous ground for them to engage on, but that is also why we should engage in turn. Well, it screams of desperation at this point to me. You know, it's, it, it, this feels like the last gasp of this argument. It does, because unironically... Uh, as we mentioned, you asked me to go fetch that old thing from uh, the like second edition. Yeah. Because back then, there were some arguments being made. They had the Sunstrokes chapter, for example, which turned out to be from a fan magazine. Uh, they had those uh, those female adventurer warriors on the sprue from Rogue Trader, which turns out to be just proto-sisters of battle, by the way. But at least then, mm -hmm. they went back in the lore. They found something that could look like a female space marine, and they based their yeah. argument on that. Yep, yeah, which is at least respectable when it comes to dealing with the universe itself. Absolutely. I would still definitely argue it was a ill-faith attempt, probably, but you can respect sure. it. At least they tried yeah. to find a rationale. Yeah, precisely. Marines due to limitations inherent to the process of creating them. Well, not really. The most important thing to remember when analyzing the grim darkness of the 42nd millennium, something which sadly many people seem to forget or ignore, is... Also, I, I love the fact that he calls it the 42nd millennium, because he's fully yeah, embraced the, the new millennium. Lore. Oh, right, okay, right. Oh, right, are we, are we in the 42nd uh, millennium now, are we? The uh, Primaris Marine bullshit has moved up the storyline, so technically... What, a thousand years further? Okay. Oh yeah, they just... The entire Indomitus Crusade where the Primaris Marines got battle-hardened, they just skipped that. That was entirely time-skipped. Right, okay, fair enough. It's just one of the many pieces. I hate the Primaris Marines so much. I, I don't hate them, but then I don't really know anything about the lore of them, so... I'm not a lore master is that every bit of information we have, every slice of text, every image, every piece of footage, everything, is coming from a source that can be either biased, misinformed, or outright lying. Okay, this universe on, can never on, be... Hang on, hang on. Right, hang on, right. So what has he said there, right? What he said there is essentially nothing. Because, yes, every piece of information that we have comes from a source that is either biased, misinformed, or outright lying, right? That doesn't mean wrong. 
And if he thought it was wrong, he would say it was wrong. But instead, he's got to cast this kind of uh, authoritative doubt on the authority of the people writing these things. For example, saying biased. Yeah, biased just means in favour of. Yeah, well, no kidding. Everything that anyone from Games Workshop has ever written about Warhammer is in favour of Warhammer. What a brilliant statement. But that doesn't make it wrong. That doesn't reduce their authority on the subject, obviously, because they are the gods of the Warhammer universe. In fact, they're the ones with the ultimate authority on the subject. So what would be the point of saying this? Well, what he's trying to do is leverage open a space where he can insert a great deal of bullshit. That's what. <laughs> And without the ability to leverage open that space, he would just be told to shut up and piss off at this point in the video, this early in it. Yes, we are a minute 35 seconds in, and his primary argument is, I made it the fuck up. Yes. Well, I, well he hasn't quite got to that yet. He, he does get to that, but he hasn't quite got to that yet. But the point is, the um, the groundwork that he's laying for his argument is just terrible. It's just terrible. And it's it's the it's the weakest attempt at a postmodern argument I've seen so far. Absolutely, and I like the quote here as well. So because this is from Aaron Dembski Bowden. Now Bowden yeah. writes excellent chaos, but he should be kept mm -hmm. far away from Imperials because he hates loyalists and he he actively <laughs> tries to ruin them. Yeah, but. The the full quote of this is rather interesting. I'm going to read some of this out. Uh, One of my greatest mistakes was made by almost every fan of Warhammer 40,000. It is to take the canonical rules of another license and crowbar them into 40k. Usually, it is an unconscious assumption based on a mix between common sense and Star Wars, which is a combination you don't expect to see every day. It is also works about as well as you'd think. Hmm. This demonstrates a lack of knowledge of both entities because star wars doesn't have a hard canon rule set either star wars actually has to divide in its various properties like games books uh, stories etc into gradients of canon where mm -hmm. there are some works that are more canon than others well didn't disney invalidate like the entire extended universe yep they did that too brilliant so this is not the same like star wars doesn't have a fixed canon but 40k actually has because um mm. for, from back when you got into 40k and when i got back into 40k it was ages ago the universe has actually remained very solid for a very long time i went back and looked at it and about 24 to 25 years there were next to no major changes in 40k you know you know what right i i have been in and out of 40k for decades i first started playing when i was about 12 or 13 years old so i've literally been playing this on and off for 30 years and i'm more into the game and the modeling than i am the law so i've I've never taken the law you know in depth or anything but that's one of the things i actually really like about warhammer is that as soon as i came back i knew exactly what everything was mm -hmm. because it's been literally the same the whole time like, a new innovation to me was the Necrons, you know, and they've been around for decades. Mm -hmm. 40k has remained remarkably internally consistent, and that is one of the, the draws for me, because it isn't like Star Wars, where a new character or a new storyline or a new plot or a new backstory just kind of emerges. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah that's exactly uh, right. ADB then continues to say that I got this wrong myself right up, to, up until I was in the meeting with the company's intellectual property manager. Not their law person, mind you, their IP manager, a, a desk jockey, the guy whose job it is to preserve the integrity of the IP in a market sense. He said, well, look, as a part to, of the... In, in his credit, to his credit, you would expect him to have a fairly good grasp of the law. Well, that's the so. thing. I'm not sure he does, because then he says, oh, right. when I was specifically asking about canon, he replied with something I've tried to take to heart. It's all real, and none of it's real. This just seems like a cope to me. Exactly, yes, but from the perspective it, of an IP wild. manager, that makes sense, because what you're trying to do is protect all of it. No matter mm. what. Even the old works by C.S. Lewis that claims that the Imperial Guard, uh, that the Eldar, excuse me, steal Imperial Guard vehicles because they're better than their own. Well, this, uh, this is, again, like the problem with the age of 40k, though. 
and the number of hands that have worked on it, there are going to be inconsistencies in the law. Absolutely. Okay. You know, GW should literally just put out, oh, I don't know, like a, a statement in the most recent Horus Heresy and tell us what the canonical perspective on female space marines is, which they did. And that, that being the latest one is the correction to the previous errors or inconsistencies in my view. Mm -hmm. And again, for anyone wondering, it, 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 they literally expressly just said no girls. <laughs> they did. <laughs> and again, like, it, from a company perspective, this is entirely fine and understandable because you want to yeah. protect everything that is 40k. And there are also yeah. going to be inconsistencies. The Horus Heresy has like three different versions of Petarabo with widely different personalities. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that none of it is real. That doesn't mean that a canon can't be extracted from this. And it can be to varying degrees. Like, I could argue that this version of Petrabo is more Petrabo, but when you've got three different versions, then my argument doesn't necessarily have all that much more weight than the other argument. But in the case of female space marines, it has been consistent throughout the entire story. Yeah, there's never been a time when it hasn't been this. Exactly. So there's never been a time when the Emperor... Well, I mean, there has been a time when the Emperor has been on the throne, but you know what I mean? Like... Um, it, the the arc of the emperor has always been the same. He gets uh, almost defeated, mortally wounded, and now he protects humanity from the golden throne. Like you don't need to question that. That is just a, an established part of the law. Mm -hmm. Have every slice of text, every image, every piece of footage, everything is coming from a source that can be either biased, misinformed, or outright lying. This universe can never be condensed into a neat and tidy encyclopedia where every bit of data is attributed to some peer-reviewed journal or first-hand account. The history of the imp <laughs> What a strange standard. I know. <laughs> it's really weird, like a peer-reviewed journal, peer excuse me? Peer-reviewed Warhammer 40,000 journal, eh? I, I like the sound of it, you should start one. <laughs> like, I, 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 I suppose, I guess... I... If I steal a man his position, basically what he's saying is there isn't an absolute source for the law, which he's uh, yeah. sort of correct on. Sure, sure, yeah. It's it, like like a lot of canons, uh, it is made up of a, an iterative process where some things are uh, left out, even though they may seem valid or have been previously valid. Yeah. Uh, you can uh, you can take the the image in the background for example. It's clearly hyperbolic. It's clearly heroicified, right? It's larger than life mm -hmm. characters fighting on this absurd battlefield. Mm -hmm. And you could then say that okay, well, this was how it was back then because it was a part of the law then. It was a part of the visual aesthetic then. Yeah. And then they've now evolved into a more like uh, attempt to make it realistic rather than these oceans Rudy. of warriors things. Yeah, broody and uh, modern. But I, I have to say, I do like the old aesthetic of the Warhammer battles. It made it look like Warhammer. Like, I always liked the whole sea of fighters kind of thing, because it gave that ridiculous scale. Scope, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was so good. But I would also argue that no, most of the information in 40k can actually be seen as an encyclopedia. Um, you should know. He's a frequent frequenter of Wikipedia's, for example. Well, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I've I've heard that he uses Wikipedia a lot. But in in his defense here, Wikipedia for for subjects that aren't expressly political, Wikipedia is actually pretty good. Yep. Um. So in his defense, you know, I won't won't get on him too much about that. But um, the the problem again, just that, that we're going to consistently come back to is this denial that there can be the objective foundations of what has been established. And we know that there are. So essentially everything he says regarding that is obfuscation at best. Imperium and the galaxy it inhabits is instead a blend of legend, myth, contradictions, deception, and forgery. In the grim darkness of the far future, objective truth does not exist. Anyone. Okay, okay, uh, uh, okay. Objective truth does exist outside of the Warhammer universe, about the Warhammer universe. 
the he is he is acting as if the Warhammer universe is self generative at this point, as if it wasn't created by people for a reason, you know. But that's not the case, and so you don't need to take the internal uh, propaganda of the Warhammer universe from any particular faction as being true. It might well not be, and in fact, I'm sure in many cases it isn't. It's not the only thing we have to rely on here. Mm -hmm. And even within the universe too, again, there exists absolute truths. The Horus Heresy mm -hmm. is a chronicle of events as viewed by God. Like it is, it is written this way. It is not a recording. It is not a scripture. It is not an ancient record of events. It yeah. is you watching the ven events unfold. Yeah. The omniscient narrator. And the narrator isn't a member of the universe, a person in the universe. The narrator is the uh, the author from Games Workshop, which is fine. Yes. Like, that a is, that is every workers. fantasy universe. Yeah. It's like, how the Odyssey's written, you know? <laughs> it's <laughs> it's kind of like when he talks about the idea of a peer-reviewed peer -reviewed paper. It's as if he's trying to be like, well, this isn't reality, and therefore we don't know what's real. Like we could, mm. it's basically the the good old "why don't they just make it up" argument, but delivered in a slightly different form. Yeah, and again, it's about opening cracks to insert BS, um, because actually, we do actually infallibly know. And this is the the question here is epistemological: How do we know something? Now, to a person within the Warhammer universe from the like what's the what's that law channel I really like but is a complete commie I told you about him the other day oh what's his fucking name something in <laughs> Oculus something right he I really like his videos they're really good and they're told from the perspective of some sort of imperial archivist so from within the universe you know access to secret documents whatever mm -hmm. um and it it, it makes a it would make complete sense applying to the character that this guy is playing when he does his videos. Because the framing is, I'm a, an Imperial Archivist, I'm within the universe, and therefore my knowledge and my biases make me limited in what I can know and understand. But that's actually not the perspective that we are taking as outsiders from the universe. We have, as you said, the God's eye view. So none of this matters, none of this is true, and... What we, what the Oculus guy would do is say, I'm fallibly justified, right? Epistemologically, I can only justify it with what I have to hand, and it could be another way. You know, I don't know that it is another way, it just could be. However, what we have is infallible justification. It's not another way. We know that it's not another way, because we literally have access to the gods of the universe and a god's eye view of the universe and so we can actually infallibly justify with the evidence at our disposal until games workshop finally capitulate and cuck and rectify and wreck on everything until that point it is infallibly justified that this is the case mm -hmm. who tells you otherwise is probably looking to claim your soul so if you read the aforementioned quote and decided to accept it at face value, good for you. The Imperium is always in need of easily persuaded, uncritical souls to work as leech harvesters and mine thralls. But the original quote did not come from within the Warhammer universe. It came from outside of the Warhammer universe about the Warhammer universe. Mm -hmm. Do you see the point there, folks? Absolutely. There is, uh, there is a truth because the author, the person who created the universe, the god, the originator, has told us that mm -hmm. this is how it is. Nice yeah. and simple. And it's also... It did not... It Sorry. must be this way. It has to be this way. Because if it is not, then what he goes on to say, like, oh, the Imperium is uh, in need of leech harvesters, how do you know there's leech harvesting farms? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he appeals directly to the, uh, the canon while making an argument against the canon. Yes. Because like, if we cannot take the words of the creators of the universe at face value, then the universe doesn't exist. Simple as. You have yeah. invalidated the entire creation at that point. But we've got no reason to doubt that the creators of this universe are lying to us. Why would, what would be the point of them lying to us? There's no reason for us to not take what they've said at face value. There's no reason. There, There's no reason from a, a questioning standpoint and there's no reason from a I would like to enjoy this thing standpoint you know mm, mm. It, it would be ridiculous 
to approach a established universe like Star Wars and go like, well, actually, uh, I don't think this is about Star Wars at all. I think this is about uh, yeah. magic space animals. Yeah. It just makes no sense, and there's no need to do it. And again, you can't appeal from... It's a category error, saying, well, look, you know, uh, this thing from outside of the universe says this, but if you believe that, then you're something from within the universe. And it's like, no. But for me, the more interesting way to interpret this universe is to never fully trust anything you've been told. So when available sources claim that the process of creating space marines is only successful in men, and in almost every instance, artwork and footage depicts the Astartes universally as men... Not almost. Every. Single. Solitary. Instance. Also, contradiction in his own language. When almost every piece of artwork depicts them universally as men, so that would have to be every piece of artwork definitionally. Because otherwise, it's not universal. <laughs> it's just very common. And it, it's, it's such a... I, I... <laughs> like his own language betrays him. Yep. Because no, he probably knows that this isn't a very good argument. And I believe that too, because... Uh... <laughs> yeah, I believe it too. I think he does. When I did my video on this... I I swear to God, called red. I was like, okay, I'm d I know I know three things this guy is gonna do, and one of them is gonna be he's gonna walk back his confidence declaration on Twitter, where he's like, "Debate me, bro, I'll yeah. destroy you." Yeah. yeah, but your argument isn't that good. And after being violated on Twitter, I think you'll know the argument wasn't that good too. Yeah, but also no, no. Uh, yeah, I mean that's exactly right, and you can see this in his framing, which is perfect. I love his framing. Because his framing is simply, this is my headcanon. I think it's more interesting to interpret this universe in a way not intended by the god of the universe. O okay, great. But that means that this, this video, your opinions on this, literally have the same value as me saying, well, I can interpret it in any other way. And so actually, every space marine is a clone of Garfield. Now what? <laughs> How is it? Oh, it's it's. I just think it's more interesting. You see the value of saying, "Oh, it's about my interest now," rather than the actual objective right and wrong of the question. Like you, you can find whatever the fuck you like interesting, but that doesn't make it a good argument or relevant to the subject. Mm -hmm. I am inclined to believe that yeah, female space marines don't seem to exist. But do I take <laughs> this as unshakable evidence? Row, row, row your boat <laughs> gently down the stream. Now, hear me out, guys. I've got an argument with female space marines. Now, I am inclined to believe they don't exist. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That's genuinely hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> now, my argument is total bollocks, as far as I believe, but maybe you don't believe that. I, th this leads me also onto the thing, like, one of the the big questions here is, why would he even do this? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Great the question. person himself goes, uh, "Yeah, I'm wrong." But hold on a second. <laughs> what if I wasn't wrong? <laughs> like, I I assume that this is essentially progressive virtue signaling. I I and I, in fact, I, we can come to it later. I think, but I think essentially leftists are compelled to um make an argument like this because of the right-wing nature of the imperium it is exclusionary and anti-egalitarian and i don't think they can help themselves because of their you know their sort of progressive jihad demands it basically mm. mpc brain does not compute to be boop yeah 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 no it's exactly right they they if the imperium is allowed to stand and they have to essentially accept limits on their universal ideology. And obviously that means it's not universal. No. So th this, you... this, this irritates them. This is a bug. This is, you know, like a, a being bitten by a fly. They have to scratch this. It is an inconsistency in their mind that they can't ignore. Well, it, it undermines everything about their worldview. Genetic engineering is one of the few areas of scientific advancement that survived the age of strife more or less intact. 
It is very likely the only field of study in which the Imperium can even approach the marvels and miracles of the Golden Age of Humanity. This so I almost had an aneurysm about this in my video, but I'm, I'm not even going to comment on the lore inaccuracies this time. We're just going <laughs> to go through it. See, I'm, I'm not an expert on the law, so I don't know where he's being inaccurate to the law, apart from in the big strokes, you know? Yeah. But meanwhile, it, it irritates me, because I did, like, a, a long-ass philosophical uh, video on the, the, the deep fucking lore of the men of gold and the stone and stuff, and to put it short, no, the, the Space Marines is not even remotely close to what the, uh, the Terran Federation once did, but we're just going to ignore that for now. All right. This is precisely why the Emperor used it as the basis of the Thunder Warriors, Custodes, and eventually the Space Marines. The idea that the Imperium's biotechnical divisions were able to create genetically modified warriors who can spit acid and acquire a subject's memories by eating its flesh were somehow thwarted by comparatively minor differences in human hormones, well, I don't buy it. Not and here we arrive at the if there are dragons, why can't there be rich black people argument? <laughs> um, yeah, well, I mean, that's basically where he's arrived at, isn't it? Um, the answer is, of course, uh, and referring back to my essay and uh, the pawn Ernst Gombrich, uh, it breaks the illusion. Mm -hmm. There's no need. This is pointless. And you're only saying this because you're desperate. Yeah. No, because it, this in and of itself is... A ridiculous justification that was popularized, um, and not by the Game of Thrones series, but that was where it really started taking off. But the, the mm. argument is, you can believe in dragons, but not black people. That's the thing, because there, there was a race swap in a fantasy series, and they were like, oh my god, you can believe in dragons, but not black people? Lol, yeah. lol, lol. And that sounded like a good comeback for them at the time, I'm sure. Well, it, that's the thing. That's not the argument, really, is it? What they're saying is... You can believe in dragons, but you don't believe in evolution. And it's like, well, I kind of do believe that parents produce children that resemble them. And so if everyone in Westeros is white, how did a black person suddenly spring up? Yeah. And the thing is, too, we can believe in dragons because dragons are real. In that universe. The dragons mm. in Game of Thrones universe is no more of an abnormality than a deer is in our world. Like, it's simply mm. an animal. Meanwhile, a more... black Valerian hailing from a race of famously pale-skinned people. <laughs> and, but moreover, the, the, the point, again, of um, a story is to be a representation of reality. And what this means, that the parameters, the setting of the story... If it doesn't explicitly say this is not like the real world, then we assume it is like the real world. And the author banks on this on everything, you know. When they when they mention any kind of part of a person, they assume we take the context of what we understand a person to be. And that's why you have to specify what the things that separate this world from the real world are. For example, the existence of dragons. George R. R. Martin says nothing about actually genetics isn't a thing in the Game of Thrones world, and people just pop up at random colors at will, and therefore you get a black Valerian. Just, he doesn't say anything like that. He assumes there is a heredity of genetic sort of succession with the fact that the, the, the Valerians have white hair and pale skin. They inherit that. That is a, a genetic legacy that they get from previous generations. And so we know that Martin is committed to the real-world passage of genes. Because, mm -hmm. like you said, there's the thing. If they don't state otherwise, we assume that it is in real world. The, the, the people of Westeros appear to be humans, okay? Yep. Well, we know how humans work. And therefore, yeah. if... And a race of pale-skinned people have a child we expect it to be pale. Yes. And you would have to explain why it wouldn't be. And Martin doesn't, so we don't think it would. Absolutely. And the, again, with even, without even going that far, the, the entire... Uh, I like V's argument on this. V has a fantastic argument here, which is, okay, if dragons are real and Black Valerians are real, why aren't BMWs with rocket launchers real? 
Great question. Because at that point, why isn't everything real? Why why aren't there BMWs? Like, why didn't Jon Snow just defeat the army of the night with an army mm -hmm. of fucking Cadillacs? And the, the answer they would have to fall back on is, well, verisimilitude to the universe. Yeah, they would have sense. to go like, well, that's silly. <laughs> like, yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's exactly it. They'd have to go, that'd be silly, wouldn't it? Oh, really? Really? Okay, yeah, that would be silly. Yeah, correct. That'd be very stupid. <laughs> Not completely. I am also aware that Imperial organizations work tirelessly to suppress information, and that the decision of what information necessitates suppression often comes down to the archaic and nonsensical opinions of zealots and the insane. And furthermore, it is often very difficult to ascertain what is being deliberately suppressed and what the Imperium has just gotten wrong. The okay. earliest All right. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, fair enough. Okay, but how does the Imperium suppress information that originates from outside the Warhammer universe. Mm -hmm. If it can't, then this is an invalid argument. Yep. And uh, what he brings up too is the example of the Necrons, right? Who had one of their earliest appearances in a White Dwarf uh, magazine ages before they become an army, listed simply as a Xeno species. Okay. Well, I remember these from fucking Space Hulk. Oh, yeah, they're, they're ancient, right? Yeah. But that was, of course, not the Imperium suppressing that information. Like The Imperium wouldn't go to some random person and go like, Hey, uh, did you know there are killer robots in space? <laughs> Why would it? Exactly. <laughs> what would be the fucking point? But we know that because it wasn't the Imperium who told us. Again, this is the point you've no. been reiterating so many times. You need to make a distinction between the Imperium and Games Workshop. Yes. The Imperium and God. Mm -hmm. God has told us this. Oh, hey. Okay, so a slight uh, side tangent there. I spotted somebody I recognize in chat. Uh, Norn Queen Kia. I'm actually watching your channel a little bit. So, one of the interesting things here is also the argument for why they're doing this, right? Because back in 2016, mm. the argument was, we're doing this because we want women to play our game. All oh, right? Yes. Now, we debunked that in 2016 by, quote, and by quoting, in many cases, the actual women themselves saying, you know what, I actually like the, the alien species, Terranids, Orcs, etc. But also, there's a kind of fundamental reality about women, is they generally don't enjoy playing tabletop tactical war games. That as well. They are the exceptions rather than the rule. Yes. It isn't a lack of women marines that's preventing women from thinking Warhammer's cool. <laughs> like, it's really not. It is not. And in fact, most of the women I've talked to about this say that they're actually genuinely offended by the assumption. Like, oh, I could only oh, yeah. enjoy this game if there were women in it. Yeah. But the, the but this, this is a certain kind of woman, right? This is a, a certain kind of woman who's into this sphere of uh, entertainment. If you just ask... Just a normal go to a woman on the street and show her a picture of Warhammer 40,000. A bunch of plastic figures on the table. It's like, is the reason you're not playing this game because none of these figures are women? They'll be like, no, it looks fucking boring. Go away from me, you freak. You know, I'm going to watch Real Housewives or something like that. Because women's interests are just so markedly diverse and distinguished from the interests. And this isn't even a general male interest as well. You know, it's a, it's much more widely head among men. But like, if you go up to go go to a car show or something, go up to like Dino and be like, Dino, do you want to play forty k? Like, no, fuck off, nerd. You know that doesn't look interesting to me at all. This is such a niche hobby, and it's the fact that it, it, it's actually a testament to the the actual quality of Warhammer that so many people play it. You know, because it does have a very large audience, but in comparison to the number of people that exist, it's actually vanishingly small and very very niche. Mm -hmm. And a, uh, a lived experience moment here, right? Oh, yeah. I go to the same hairdresser pretty much every single time I need to get a haircut. Every time, huh? she she knows I do YouTube, so she asks, like, oh, you do YouTube, like, All right? Oh, yeah. What do you do? Well, I do 40k lore. What's that? Oh, plastic toy soldiers. She forgets every single fucking time because she, she has no interest in hearing about my fucking yeah. toy soldiers. And you know what? It's okay. It's okay for her to have fucking no interest at all in our little plastic toy soldiers. Yes. Like I, as, as we're doing this, I'm painting up some Dark Reapers. She would have no interest in hearing anything about these Dark Reapers at all. And that's okay. 
Exactly. Like, th this woman knows the minutia of my my work up at the family business. She remembers my, my father's name, my dad, my, my mother. She knows yeah. every other facet of my fucking existence, practically, as hairdressers do. But the toy soldiers, you see her eyes mm -hmm. just glaze. Yep. And that's okay. If she would talk to me about hairdressing or makeup, I would glaze over to you. Exactly. I'm just, I'm just not interested. And that's okay. Yes, because uh, Warhammer isn't for everyone. It's just for those no. who are interested in it. Yeah, <laughs> and it's just for those who are wealthy enough to participate in it as well. <laughs> That's Warhammer's awesome. for everyone. Now, 35 quid for five plastic soldiers. Fuck you. <laughs> That's for everyone, bro. <laughs> Encounters with the Necron saw them labeled as Chaos Androids. Well, until recently... It was deemed as incontrovertible that the Squats had been rendered extinct by the Tyranids. Even the Imperium's own history is often misunderstood. There were times when the prevailing narrative was that Horus was not the Emperor's favored Primarch, but rather an especially competent general, and his heresy lasted only seven days and seven nights. With all this in mind, my personal interpretation is that female oh, Astartes yeah. almost certainly existed during the time of the Great Crusade. There's my the personal uh... interpretation. Sunstroke Marines as well. The uh, th the female Marines from a s fan magazine, so not canonical either. But my personal interpretation, okay, your headcanon, your yeah. personal headcanon, that's, and that's fine. You can have that, but you've got no evidence for it. It doesn't fit into the universe. You've made it, like, I, my personal headcanon, right, is that there's no such thing as a sequel to any of the Star Wars films. Like, there's the original trilogy, and that's it. That's my personal headcanon. I'm not even a Star Wars fan, but like I do not consider the new Star Wars films to be Star Wars films. You know, this is just, it's just bollocks. But that doesn't mean they're not Star Wars films. That just means I don't respect them. And there's a there's a degree here as well because if you, there's a thing in the universe you like that you disagree with, you are entirely within your rights to argue against it. I I vehemently hate Primaris Marines. I wish they weren't real. Mm -hmm. And I will argue why they shouldn't be real until the cows come home. But, but that is an argument from within the universe. Whereas female space marines is an argument from outside the universe. Like, okay, why would you want female space marines? It doesn't make sense logistically. It doesn't make sense logically. It doesn't make sense canonically. Well, because I feel like it. But moreover, you're not denying the existence of Primaris Marines. You're saying you don't like them, they don't make sense, you, they shouldn't be in there. Mm -hmm. Which are just value judgments on the things that exist. And that's fine, and we all make value judgments. You're not denying that the canon is the canon. They are canon, whether you like it or not, you know? Tragically. Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm not, a bi I'm not a big on law, so I actually don't... I, I just view the Primaris Marines in my own sort of head canon as just being, was it, 10th edition armor, really. Yep. Like the tenth, tenth interaction, which is what they should have been. Really, is fucking stupid. But yeah, I think the emperor in this progressive era had full. This progress. Oh, the, that one triggers me though. Progress, Arch. It's all about like, progress. The, yes, the the Imperium traveling out into galaxy, exterminating all alien life, <laughs> brutally hey, oppressing really human civilizations. That is very progressive. Like, extermination true. has been a, a a core feature of progress, and always has been. <laughs> very much so. Fully mastered the creation of the Astartes, regardless of gender. Perhaps even some famous figures from this era were in fact female. But at some point during the history Maybe. of the Imperium, possibly because of complications with implanting gene seed, but more likely because of some ignorant proclamation by the Ecclesiarchy or another more imperial likely. institution, the idea of recruiting female space marines fell out of favor. So, this one too. This is not an in-universe argument in the slightest. This is, oh, Christians are bad, right? They, they don't like women, right? So the Ecclesiarchy would ban women space marines. The Doesn't Ecclesiarchy... massive amount of sense. You know, the, the Ecclesiarchy has the Sisters of Battle. Like, literally, their entire armed forces yeah. is women. <laughs> Isn't half of the Emperor's Guard women? Oh, the Sisters of Silence, yeah. Yeah. Like, the Ecclesiarchy so not... in this universe would have no reason to go like, well, oh, women are bad. Yeah. And, and in fact, aren't the Sisters of Battle the most fanatical defenders of the Imperial Orthodoxy? Absolutely. 
And note so as well, it, at no point did the Ecclesiarchy go like, oh, the Imperial Guard can't have women in it. No. No, they're, they're just as conscriptable, aren't they? Yeah. And I noticed that none of the fans are like, yeah, there can't be any female Imperial Guardsmen. Yeah, that, no, that's fine. It makes perfect sense that, you know, anyone who can hold a LAS rifle can die for the Emperor. That's fine. This is specific because the Space Marines were created by the Emperor that, as Games Workshop's law tells us, requires the person to be a male. Probably because the Emperor was trying to create the most perfect warriors and wanted to start with the best material available for that purpose. Yeah. And um, I gave this example in my uh, video as well, so I'll uh, reiterate here for the uh, many people watching. Um, in, in Norway, we have special forces, like every other country. We're sending them into Afghanistan to do deep patrols, you know, the usual nonsense we did over there in the sandbox. And one of the problems that we encountered was that we couldn't interrogate Afghani women because, you know, a, a Muslim woman in an orthodox uh, country like that isn't going to be particularly open with the giant bearded blonde Norwegian person with a machine gun. And so we figured, Nothing okay, we, we need women to do this because you can get a lot, lots of useful information from these people, from women and children and so on, which sounds awful now that I say it like that. <laughs> but... There were no women who had completed the requirements for the Special Forces course. So, okay, what do we do? Well, they tried a special um, group of women. They are, like, the best in the army. And like, okay, you, you take the test. They all failed. Every last one of them. Yeah. And there's, so... There's never been a woman who has passed a Special Forces test. Yeah. And so, you know what we did? We created a second division of the Special Forces for women only... And then we managed to get people in it. And can you guess what we did to finally get Special Forces females? Well, you lowered the standard, obviously. Yes. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's not a criticism of women or anything like that. You know, it's, it's just a fact of life. I mean, this, this is the... It, it's exactly the same in the British and American Special Forces. There, there, are, there are multiple stages of physical uh, tests to get into these. And there isn't a single woman who has even passed the first stage. It is just the nature of males and females that they are physically different. It's the end of the story. And again, we, we are talking peak human performance here. That's what the space is are. Mm. They are the absolute elites of the Imperium. Because hell, yes. I wouldn't stand a fucking chance of any of, any of these tests either. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to be clear, we're not saying that we as men would be... No, and there are probably loads of really buff women who could beat us up, but that's not the question. <laughs> exactly. And in the case of the Space Marines, again, you, you have a, a very small number of soldiers. They require hyper-specific and rare materials, and these are the spear tip of your conquest of the galaxy. Mm. Why would you lower the standards? I mean, it's literally the fate of humanity at stake. Today, if any still remain within the chapters, they are a rarity. Furthermore, I am almost convinced that with the slightest bit of effort, the Space Marine chapters could again accept female recruits. This too, like the slightest bit of it. The God Emperor couldn't figure out to do it, how to do it, but Templin's pretty sure he could. He could make it work. But why would they? Why would they bother? So, look, if you if you spent all this time and effort, you might be able to produce a female space marine that'll be 67% as strong as a male space marine. But why would we do that? Chapter Master, if we only have 100 years, we could, we could accept female recruits. Why? There are literally billions of humans. We're not going to run out of men. That's the, the problem isn't the lack of raw material. The problem is know-how and skill. Yeah, and uh, once again... The Space Marine recruits, it's not, like you said, it's not about the numbers. Even Fenris has a population of like 12 million people. It's not about quantity, mm. it's quality. Mm. Give me a second, I'm just going to, I'll be back in a second. All right. So I'm going to wander away to get himself tea. It could be a while, chat. Prepare yourself for a long wait, a harsh winter. Dev is watching, and that's terrible. And Yanovich too. Hey, Yanovich. Yanovich is a good guy. He does excellent 40k animations. I'd highly recommend checking out his channel as well. 
He's also been cancelled for uh, <laughs> putting too much militarism in his videos. <laughs> so that's a good thing. It's a very laudable thing, in fact. Be careful around Dev, though. You might be infected by communism. I only say that because uh, literally before the stream, he's like, remember to share the wealth, Arch? He does that, by the way, frequently. It's a bit creepy. Kick Dev. It doesn't have quite the same sound as Kick V, frankly. Sorry about that. No problems. I was lambasting yeah, Dev so... for being a communist. <laughs> But yeah, the, you, the point is exactly, we're, n we're not in any danger of running out of men, and if for some reason they had run out of men, okay, fair enough, maybe they could try it with females. Yeah, if at some point in the... Well, even then, okay, the Imperium is, is running out of manpower. Let's put women, the, the people who make more people, on the front line. It, yes, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> but, you know, at the very, <laughs> the, the very most extreme point, you know, you would have to be... It, it's it's not feasible, basically, within the law, I would say. But what do I know? Yeah. But the Imperium has become so entrenched in religious dogma and ignorance... Again, okay, again, I hate this point, because this point is not from 40k perspective, it's from the modern-day perspective. Religious yeah. dogma, yes, but there is nothing in the, the, the Ecclesiarchy's teachings against women soldiers. And, they have and, entire regiments of them. Yes, it's so dumb. Like This is him just being like, well, Christianity is bad and it's very intolerant in our world, right? So clearly it's in yeah. 40k too. No, the ecclesiarchy is not Christianity. It's not the same yeah. fucking thing. Yeah. It annoys me. There's that too, become... too much evidence in 40k that they don't care about female soldiers. Yep. Unable to question and possibly disprove what it considers to be the absolute truth. The Imperium senselessly wasting 50% of its own available manpower. 50 <laughs> Imagine thinking that Space Marines are 50% of humanity. Uh, yep. If only we could get the other 50% on, we'd finally get these aliens done. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so wrong. Again, it's like 50% of uh, the population have what it takes to be Special Forces soldiers. Like, Tier 1 operators yeah, are yeah. just everywhere. If only we weren't conscripting them into the Imperial Guard, I guess. <laughs> well, it's just... Anyway, yeah. If you'll pardon the term, because of some ancient misunderstanding, is the kind of tragedy this regime is built on. Now, admittedly, this is just my personal headcanon, or... Uh, yes. There you fucking have it, I guess. Yeah, that's, that's the end of... I mean, the video was ended long ago, really, but, you know, if you needed anything more, well, there we go. It's my personal headcanon. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yep, it's your headcanon. I also why like how... Why were you uh... so... Aggr Sorry, go on. Oh, uh, no, go, no, go on. Well, just why were you so aggressive on Twitter? Well, I don't understand. This is my personal headcanon. If you'd said that, if you'd just been like, yeah, my personal headcanon, there are female space marines. Everyone would go, well, okay, well, that's your opinion. And that would have been it. Yeah. You're stupid. Go no away. One... Yeah, well, even then, no one would have unsubscribed. Everyone would be like, yeah, whatever, man. And I, I love how, invariably as well, they take on the persona of chaos. Every single yes. solitary time. Yes. And down there in the book it, there, yeah. that's his original tweet, again, where he was very aggressive, like, uh, give me your arguments and I'll destroy them in a video. Yeah. And uh, next to that is the tweet that he blocked me for. <laughs> yeah. It's just very strange. Like, why do this? Why not just be normal and be like, well, look, and if you're going to literally admit this is your, just your headcanon, then why are we having this conversation at all? Well, that's an interesting question, because I, I think, I think that the reason why he's doing this is for the attention. Quite simple. Like, he, he said something that's retarded on social media. Then he continued to virtue signal about it and to a very specific crowd. Like, look, 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 I'm on mm. your side. Look. Look at all of That's these the evil right-wingers going after me. But, the, but this, I think, reinforces my point about this being like the progressive crusade. They can see this, this castle, this bastion, this fortress that has been untaken. And it bothers them. It really bothers them that they can't take this castle. Mm -hmm. 
And again, it's not enough that there are already female armies. It's not enough that our female upgrade spruce for the Imperial Guard. It's not enough that the models are plastic miniatures and they could make them into whatever the hell they want. It is nothing to do with any of those things. It has to do with power, with influence. Yes. Getting GW to bend the knee. The fact that there is... And this, this is, I think, what really underpins it. The fact that this is for men. That's what it is. This is for men. It's not for women. There are no women space marines. Space marines are an institution. It's like, a, like you know, the sort of working men's clubs, right? That's the kind of effect they have on the progressives. They see it as being a boys' club. Oh, but no women are allowed. Oh, that's exclusionary. It's like, yes, it is. Deeply, deeply exclusionary. Deal with it. And they're going to deal with it the same way they always have. By trying to make it illegal. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly right. Straight it's the up. only way they know how to deal with it. This is why they were, there was a dude who was earning a living going around gyms, all female gyms, and suing them for being exclusionary. Because they made the mm. law such that you can't exclude people based on gender. Mm-hmm. And then they realized later, like, hold on. But we like to exclude people based on gender, too. Oh, no. I mean, no on, I, I think... I think there should be institutions that are exclusionary for men and women. Yeah. I totally do. Like, especially... I believe like, there should be women-only gyms. Absolutely. Like, in, in the case of gentlemen's clubs, too. Okay. I imagine a club for men and a club for women would look very different. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they always used to. Like, we, we, we used to have working men's clubs here, right? Like, back in the 60s and stuff. And... You, they were just places where guys could go to have a bit of time away from their families, away from their wives, and have a beer with their mates and read a newspaper. They really weren't very exciting. Or fan fiction, if you prefer. Or fan... I can't... <laughs> yes. Headcanon <laughs> fan fiction. That's precisely what you're doing here, and that's fine. Don't be angry about it. You know, we all know that that's all it is. And it's based on even less evidence than the conclusion that there are no female space marines whatsoever. I'm sure you can poke holes in my opinion just as easily as I did in the official stance of the Imperium. I don't even necessarily think you that my uh, stance no. is the you most... Did, he didn't poke any holes in the official stance of the Imperium. Yeah. He strawmanned the official stance of the Imperium. Like, so as far as we can tell, if the Imperium... If, if women would make suitable and capable space marines there's no reason that the imperium wouldn't employ them yes again. like it's an external thing to the universe that he is appealing like this boys club mentality well that comes from us not the imperium yes again it's the same with the ecclesiarchy like there is no reason why hmm. the ecclesiarchy who employs an army of women would be against women in the army no it's me as a misogynist <laughs> realistic it's just what i happen to think is most interesting that's what i enjoy about this universe it invites that that's not oh it's just what i feel is most interesting as in centering the locus of validity inside himself at this point it's like i can't challenge what he finds most interesting but that wasn't what he was saying on twitter he was saying you're wrong you don't understand this universe i will destroy you but this is just what i find most interesting so okay well you're wrong actually and everyone can see that you're wrong deal with it Simple as. It's differences of interpretation. But again, I can't put any more stock into the zone interpretation of mine than I would into anyone else's. The universe just doesn't work that way. Is it possible there never were any female space marines? Yes. Is it possible there are female space marines somewhere? No. Or out no, there in the no. galaxy? Yes. Is it possible there could be an entire chapter consisting only of female space marines? Absolutely. No. This is this is actually definitionally impossible by the objective law that we have and statement by Games Workshop. This just can't be the case. It is. And is it possible? Sorry, go on. <clears throat> no, it, it is impossible. Simple as. Yeah. Possible that this all-female chapter is in fact the Ultramarines or the Black Temple? <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm not an Ultramarines fan, so actually, let's hear him out. <laughs> Is it possible that the Ultra Smurfs are actual women? Hmm. 
If any chapter was going to be feminine, it would be that one. Templars <laughs> or the Space Wolves? There's a lot of evidence in the. No, the Space Wolves is no gay faction. Yep. It would not be the Space Wolves. No. They have to be men to be gay. Yep. They, their strident homosexuality lies at the core of the Space Wolf experience. I'm not even going to deny that. <laughs> No, no, it's it's so self evident. Why would, you wouldn't have an entire entire chapter of furries and suggest that this was just normal? Come on. The, the the entire point of the space wolves is the hardest fucking bro culture you've ever seen. You know, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> the contrary, and while I can be ninety nine percent certain that this isn't true and that Marnius Calgar is indeed a man, the very nature of this universe means it's impossible to say with absolute certainty. Right. So there we are. There's the epistemological barrier. Right. It is impossible to say with absolute certainty that Magnus Calgar is a man. No, actually it's not. We know precisely, with 100% certainty, there is no crack, there is no ray of light that you can see between these two points. You can't leverage it open and try and insert some bullshit. That's just a 0%, 0 chance that Magnus or Marnius Calgar is a woman. It's just 0%. End of story. Even in our own era, there have been times when historical figures commonly believed to have been men were later discovered to have been women, and vice versa. And doesn't this kind of revelation seem like it would fit just perfectly? Big dig at Michelle Obama there, I mean, Jesus. Mm, cool. Into the age of the Imperium. Sure, a figure like Marnius Calgar is a bit of a stretch. If evidence came out that he was in fact a woman, I probably wouldn't believe that and fall back on my own interpretation. <laughs> but I mention this only to illustrate the idea that history is not immune to drastic change in light of new evidence. And the history I love of I love this so much, right? Even, even, you know, if, if evidence came out that suggested the preposterous thing that I'm suggesting, I don't think I'd believe it. <laughs> it's like, why are we having this conversation? And also, oh. like, history. The thing is, history is actually fluid, yes, because we don't know for certain. I, I wasn't around during the Second World War. I don't know what happened precisely. And so we get new evidence. We get new points of view. We get new records. We get new witness statements. All of this thing is evolving. But we history is a God's eye K. view of history. Yeah, but, th but that is in 40k. We know what happened in 40k. I have rows of books telling me what happened in 40k. They're literally written by the gods of Warhammer. What do you want? Yes. It is like, a, historians, a complete non-sequitur. Historians wish they had what we have access to with Warhammer. Mm -hmm. The Imperium even more so. Maybe in our current era, being 99% certain about something is enough to arrive at a justifiable conclusion, but the 42nd millennium is a time in which we need to forget the promise of progress and understanding, and the power of science and technology. Within the Imperium, that 99% might as well be zero. And this- Preposterous. Yeah. Absolutely preposterous. Um, so, there's, no, there's nothing about science and progress that means that- uh, logic doesn't apply and that's what he's trying to do here he's trying to negate the entire concept of a logical conclusion like you don't have to have a guaranteed logical conclusion you know it's just you can you can have realms of probability that's fine and when you have a 99 percent chance well there's just no reasonable reason that you have to fall back on that say well okay we're going to take that as a zero percent it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It doesn't. And he uh, he invokes the holy science as well. And, well, the problem with science is uh, we've been told a certain line about a certain medication, for example, for a very long mm -hmm. time now. And yet that has decided to, um, to, to not perhaps be quite as um, accurate as originally oh my God, and the, claimed. There are just so many examples in science because science is a method and not a conclusion. And the problem about it being a method is that it tends to overturn its own conclusions many, many, many times. Yes. I'd like Which to point out that there was a time where lead was medicine. There was a time when crack cocaine was medicine. Like, there's a reason we don't think that this, the, earth revol uh, the sun revolves around the earth. You know, the, these, these are all scientific discoveries, but at the time were upheld by science. Mm-hmm. 
Science is not infallible. Science is not indeed that God's eye view. No. In fact, it's a very human eye view. That's the problem with it. And again, that is what differentiates it from the setting. Because when there is a 99% probability of something being true in 40k, that that is that is an actual 99% chance. Because we know all the factors. We know all of the things mm. that affect it. Whereas in reality, we don't. Well, that's the point. The, the reason we have probability is because we don't have a God's eye view. If you have a God's eye view, you don't need probability. Mm-hmm. This extends to every aspect of the far future. Did Horus kill Sanguinius before his final confrontation with the Emperor? Maybe. I'd even go so far as to say probably. But if someone told me that during the <laughs> Siege of Terra, Sanguinius fell to the Black Rage, killed Horus, and then tried to kill the Emperor, and this was suppressed by the High Lords of Terra to preserve the honor of one of mankind's greatest heroes, there is nothing I can do to definitively prove that person wrong. Well, hang on a second. Yeah, there is. You can check the law books. Yep, you, you can check the law book. Because, again, which are... this Go isn't on. an interpretation. He, he's, he's presenting all of this as if all of yeah. this is equally valid, right? Everything is just yeah. an interpretation. No, no, it isn't. This this is the problem with postmodernism. Is in a, in a world absent objective truth, as in uh, a guaranteed dictate by God then that is a powerful argument, actually. We we actually have to accept that, you know, the knowledge we have of the universe becomes uh, slightly suspect because of our own human perspective and the failures of our own perceptions. Yeah, okay, that, that is a true statement. But when you apply that to fiction, it becomes an invalid statement because actually we have access to God. We have access to the person, their the, the, the creator, his intentions and what it actually means. They can give us the correct interpretation. Mm -hmm. Likewise, nobody can disprove the idea that space marine chapters out there might have unlocked or retained the technologies allowing for the successful transformation of female recruits. Or that yeah, no, we can. We can. Games Workshop expressly did that in the Horus Heresy release. They said, without question. It can only be done with men because it's keyed to the male hormones. That's the that's the, the point that disproves your thesis. Yeah, we have the evidence. We have the ironclad proof directly from God himself contradicting yeah. your position. Yeah, it's literally divine writ at this point. Base marines might remain common across the chapters, and this has just been suppressed by the Inquisition for whatever reason. I, I'd love that too. Just he he doesn't even have an argument anymore. So he was oppressed by the Inquisition. Why? <laughs> Inquisition's full of neckbeards, isn't it? <laughs> a deeply misogynistic organization, didn't you know? Yeah, yeah. No, they don't care about that at all, at all. Weirdly, the the Inquisition doesn't care about twenty first century gender politics. That's weird. Yeah. There are an endless number of explanations as to why female space marines might exist, and none of them conflict with the essential nature of the universe. No, every single last one of them conflicts with the fundamental nature of the universe. Well, it's, it's not even that. They conflict with just the facts of the universe. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, the, the nature of the universe might well be to throw women into platoons of you know soldiers and get them killed by the thousands, sure. But that's just not the fact when it comes to the space marines. Hope harder. And again, it, it is the fundamental nature, because the space marines are, in essence, genetic clones of the Primarchs. We know yeah. the Primarchs are men. Unless that's yeah. the next argument. Maybe they were all women all along. <laughs> well, he, he is, he's already got to the point where he's like, well, look, if you told me the Primarchs are women, I, I wouldn't believe you. I said, okay, great. And if they're literally clones of the Primarchs, then they're men, aren't they? There you go. <laughs> because the essential nature is fluid, always changing as new information is discovered and old information repressed. And th this point Which is not true. No, it isn't true. Like this is the rogue trader argument. Because every yeah. time they make this argument, they have to go back to rogue trader thirty plus years ago and go like, "Look, it was always changing." No, no, it was not. 40k has remained consistent for quarter of a century. 
Like, it has not always been fluent. It's such a bullshit argument. And considering the number of iterations Warhammer has had since that time, it is remarkable how consistent it's been, actually. You know, like, I can't think of any other property that is constantly updated. Like, literally, every couple of years, a new version comes out uh, with the same internal consistency that Warhammer has. It's just really unusual, actually, the commitment to this. It's it's so anti-fluid. It's remarkable. Mm -hmm. The only constant is tone and atmosphere. The details... No, that's not true. Let's go back to the Rogue Trader days when it was more of a comedy. Yeah. No, like Rogue Trader was it was lighthearted as hell, which is why you had characters like Obi Wan, Sherlock, Clouseau. <laughs> I mean, you know, and the thing is, Rogue Trader wasn't Warhammer. Nope. So now what? <laughs> now what, indeed? Now, now he copes and zeeds. I believe is the answer. Yeah, he's busy dilating. Those are ultimately secondary to that. And if you disagree with me. If your interpretation of the grim darkness of the far future is different from mine, well, this will be one of the few times I admit this, but your interpretation is every bit as valid as mine. No. no more valid. Yeah, exactly. My, mine is far more valid than yours. Yeah. What, what he's appealing to here is an equality that doesn't exist. As in, what he's trying to do is drag you down to his level of wrongness. Yes. You're just as valid as me. No, no, I'm more valid than you, because you're wrong and I'm right. Again, he spent eight minutes walking back his original tough man position, conciliate yeah. more and more and more conciliatory, until he eventually yeah. arises. Can we, can we please agree that we're both wrong? No, no. <laughs> there is absolutely yeah, just, no, no reason. <laughs> you are wrong, and I don't. You know, well, I do know why you had to do this, but you're just flat wrong. Nothing about your position holds water. You know it. Everyone else knows it. And so you're desperately again. This is just one of those ways of, it's a it's a kind of linguistic trick. Well, you're just as valid as me. No, that would reduce the amount of validity to my position. I I refuse to accept that. You know, I'm not. I'm more valid than you. And again, you're just trying to crack open a space between two truths so you can insert a lie. That's what it is. Absolutely, it is. This entire video too is, again, it is a desperate cry for attention, and it's also because. I've heard some background drama, which I'm not going to get too into because I consider it a little bit too personal, but basically the guy has been hiring voice actors to do most of the voice acting works on his videos for presentation purposes. Okay, fair enough. Yep. But apparently this started really irking him to the point where everyone knew who his voice actors were, but nobody knew who his or he was. Oh, right, okay. And so it starts making a bit more sense why he would do something completely and utterly outlandish to try and carve out something that he's known for. Well, that's really weird because, like, you know, people like the voice actors or actresses. Um, they don't like you. And, why, my why dude, just... if your bid for relevancy is this level of <laughs> philosophy, yeah. uh, I, I don't know what to tell you, my dude, other than uh, don't. Well, the thing is, I was subscribed to this channel as well before I knew it was a progressive channel, you know, because it just made law videos and occasionally I put one on because it was an interesting subject. And they didn't feel like they had a polit particular political agenda behind them, frankly. They just felt like they were explaining, describing something rather than prescribing how something should be. Why do this? And I think, I, I do genuinely think it comes back to the crusade aspect. They can't help themselves. They just can't help it. It is an itch they must scratch, as you said. Yes. Yeah. It's they they have to partake in the jihad. If you can look honestly at the forty second millennium and come to the conclusion that female space marines just don't belong there, not out of any place of misogyny, but a genuine belief that it just doesn't make sense given what we know, I respect your position. And if tomorrow some higher authority decreed that there are in fact female space marines, 100% full stop, I would, without reservation, defend your right to ignore that decree. And no, I don't think you would. Yeah. You Sorry. know, I wouldn't defend that. <laughs> if they came out and said, no, look, here we are, we've retconned the canon, female space marines are canon now, I'd be like, okay, fair enough. I probably won't play your game, but I, you know, I accept that that's now the word of God. 
It has been tremendously detrimental to the universe, and I'll happily point out all the ways in which it is. Mm -hmm. And I'll try to organize another boycott of Warhammer Plus. Yeah. And nor well, do I I'd believe for an instance that this guy would defend the position to ignore it either. Because mm. it's simply, it is not in the nature of his political persuasion. <laughs> to be tolerant, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And no, absolutely, he'd celebrate. Ah, there we BTFO misogynerds. See, and I'd be like, well, look, as a as a misogynerd myself, I I have to object and uh, take my dollars elsewhere, my friend. Yeah, because the first statement is, um, if you come to this conclusion not from a place of misogyny, okay, what if I've arrived at this position purely through misogyny? What then? Yeah. What if doesn't I just make it less true? Does it? Yeah, it doesn't make it less true. That's the thing. Yes, the position remains fundamentally the same. Yep. And to continue to interpret this universe in whatever way makes it the most interesting to you. But I would ask that you extend this same mindset to me. And no. <laughs> Just... So, the, no, no, there, there is something interesting there. You, you know what? You can interpret the universe in any way you like, you know? And I actually do you know agree that if you want to like buy a bunch of space marines and buy a bunch of female heads and put female heads on your space marines and say look it's my female space marine chapter dude have a great time you know it's your head cannon you know it's not canonical you know it's anti-canonical just deal with that and if you just say yeah yeah this is just something i would do for fun it's like i i'm in a bunch of kit bashing um groups on facebook and there's a, a, a chap called Brad Glover who's, um, uh, he does these really great fucking intricate paint designs. Um, and he's, he's kit bashed up a bunch of Tau Space Marines. Totally uncanonical. Heresy in the highest order, but they look amazing. He's done such a good job of them, you know? And so it's like, yeah, you know, great. And he, but he's not being like, right, so now I need to make a big elaborate argument as to why actually maybe Tau Space Marines is canon. He's not doing that. He's just having fun with the hobby. Mm -hmm. And there's there's the difference. I will tolerate that quite happily. Absolutely. I'll even encourage it. Okay, have fun. I'm enjoying it, to be honest. But I will not respect it. Yeah. There's the difference. Well, no, you, it, you can respect you know, the, the, the effort and the, the fun he's having. Sure. But he's not trying to retcon the canon. He's just saying, yeah, this is just a thing I did for fun. Okay, great. Great, I hope you're having a great time. But this isn't just a thing he's doing for fun. He's trying to undermine the entire setting because you're a misogynist. That's yes. why. Political activism. Because he has a greater good outside the, the universe. Yes. And since it is a greater good, it must necessarily always triumph over anything else. Yes. And everyone else, whether I say that female space marines exist, or Sanguinius killed Horus, or that the entire universe of the 42nd millennium is actually within a bottle kept by a wizard in Reichland. What I truly... Worst part is that last interpretation is probably the most canonically accurate. Also less offensive. Yeah. It's like, okay, fine. That's weird, but go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. Maybe. <laughs> What we love about the grim darkness of the 42nd millennium is that its very nature precludes the possibility of someone, anyone, coming in and telling you what is right, what is wrong, and that there's only one way to experience it. And I'll wrong. let you in on... Absolutely wrong. There are literally authors who will tell you what the right and wrong way of interpreting the universe are, but you are right in that you can enjoy it in any way you want because it's a fucking hobby. Yeah, and this is where the gatekeeping aspect comes into play yet again. Yeah. If you see a person like this go, oh, hey, uh, I have this ridiculous argument that female space marines should be real. No, attack, straight up. That is an argument that should be smashed down. If, however, he makes a video, hey, look at my female space marine chapter, shrug and go on with your day. Wow, they look cool. Yeah. Good job. If they've done a good job, whatever, you know. There you go. That is the difference. Hmm. Because there, there is such a way as a correct interpretation of how to enjoy the hobby. You want to paint space marines in the trans flag? Go ahead. You want to claim yeah. that all space marines are transgender and they must be? No, go away. Yeah. And this is the thing. You, you always see it in like the Sig Marxism forums. Well, look, I've got my trans space marines. It's like, well, every space marine is trans. <laughs> like, literally, every single one of them is transhuman. That's what a space yeah. marine is. You've done nothing. You've accomplished nothing. 
You've broken no boundaries. You've challenged no orthodoxies by doing that. On a little secret, during one of our investigations into the Imperium of Man, I included a detail that has since become the single most referenced bit of lore on this channel. We receive comments about how cool it is almost daily. The latest one, at time of recording, was left about 80 minutes ago. But that little bit of lore, according to the latest information available, either no longer exists or never did. But I thought it was cool and I included it anyways. Whether or not it's true really isn't important. It's true to me, and that's enough. No. Like, I, I, as somebody who makes a lot of videos, I will argue the counter to this, because every single solitary time I add in an interpretation, or I add in an extrapolation, etc., I always mention it, because it is not mm -hmm. the law. So... Mm -hmm. It, it's you can not... say there's a reasonable inference at this point where we can assume that X, Y, and Z is X, Y, and Z, but you can't concretely say this is the thing. Yes. That's reasonable. And which is why it is not the same. It is not truth because it is truth to you or truth to me. Yep. Now, again, there, there is an objective truth. Yes, and you can make leaps of logic if there isn't any information. You can make interpretations if there is evidence for it, but that does not make it the truth. That makes it your interpretation. Which he has admitted to all the way through this. Mm -hmm. This is my personal headcanon, okay? And given here to debate popular... your personal headcanon. Your personal headcanon is nonsense. You're a feminist. Go <laughs> <laughs> like why, why would I care about the head cannon of a feminist? It's become on this channel. I kind of think people agree with me, even if they don't know it. <laughs> and while I certainly, I love that. Why like, do you need validation? It, it's such a. I I hate that sentence too. Like I think people agree with me, even if they don't know that I've tricked them. Like yeah, my dude. <laughs> That's oh I. Mm. I, I hate that so much. It's like, well, people agree with me. Why? Well, because I lied to them. I'm like, okay. Well, they would agree with you then, wouldn't they? <laughs> they don't know what the truth is. It's a great way. In fact, li lying is historically proven a great way of getting people to agree with you when you're telling bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's it, not very it, honorable, but... You know, it's it presented as if it's virtuous. Like, he did this because, well, this will yeah. make everything better. I, I, yeah. Only understand and even appreciate having an ironclad history, a firm and uncompromising canon or continuity, if you will. There are also times when it's refreshing to just not deal with that. Wouldn't it have been nice to have the option to say that Rey is not Palpatine's granddaughter, or that the war against the Night King was way cooler than whatever this is, and have those interpretations be totally valid? See. I'm uh, sure. Uh, sure. I, I'm sure it would be nice if I could reach out my hand and just wipe Disney from the earth, <laughs> but unfortunately, or George R. R. Martin. Yep. But that isn't the case. So what you can do is you can make an argument from the perspective of the universe. Like I can easily make an argument against the battle against the Night King. Sending an army of light cavalry charging out over broken ground in the middle of the night. <laughs> And preposterous. It's a very bad idea. But again, but I that's not me arguing not that uh, the, uh, the the commander of the army was a misandrist and just wanted to see all of the Mongolians die. Yeah. I can just say that was a really stupid idea. Yes. But it was canon, and they did do it. Yes, absolutely. And no, it's, it's like, I don't even care about the validation of having this be a perfectly okay interpretation. No, I will make my argument, and if it turns out to be a terrible argument, well, I haven't done my job now, have I? Hmm. Now I am no fool, and I have no doubt that I will have failed to convince most or even any of you, but let's make a deal. If you decide to argue with me in the comments, include the following phrase somewhere in your argument. You will die as your weakling father died. Alright, so the rest of the video is just him begging for interaction, essentially. Yes, yes. Which well, is also sad, in large part the point of the video. Uh, rage baits, yeah. in the purest form. Yeah, yeah. It's just quite sad.
It's like, look, you, the, you, he has no firm ground to stand on, and he knows he has no firm ground. And so this is, in some way, like a cry for attention. And you can only assume that the fact that he came out so aggressively on Twitter is just further proof of this. Just like, I'm lonely. Give me some attention. Oh, absolutely. Like, I am absolutely convinced that this is some sort of a cry for attention. And mm. if I was to be charitable, what I would think is that he he thought about the Space Marine question. He talked to his echo chamber of leftists about it. And they were like, yeah, yeah, no, this is a great idea. You'll totally demolish those filthy right wingers with this. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I can do this. And so he comes out swinging and then he hits the door. Hmm. But now he can't back down because originally he said he was going to make a six part video series on this. Really? Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know about Strange you, but I'm not to holding die my on, breath at least you're for, dead. Uh, for the next five entries. Yeah. And again, like the, the, the thing is too, right? This guy genuinely has nothing to prove. He's got 500,000 subscribers. Well, 10,000 yeah. less now, but it's like... Yeah. There was no... He's, he... Hang on. Well, he's got a really successful channel. Yeah. And... But this is this is the point, isn't it, though? Like, the other videos are him that I've seen are him normatively... Uh, sorry, descriptively explaining something. So he is just saying, this is what we've been told about the law of this universe, accepting the premise that there was a god of the universe that set the law. And that's fine. That's interesting. But now he's come with a normative vision. I have a prescription of how this universe should be. And let me tell you about the made up fancy I have about it in my head. Well, why are you doing that? Well, because in every other universe, we can kind of enforce an egalitarian mindset on the civilization in question. You know, there's there's kind of way that we can undermine it. But in Warhammer, no. The Imperium and the Space Marines in, in explicitly are exclusionary of women. That's why. This really gets under their skin. Really, they can't square this with their own personal values. Mm -hmm. And it's also the thing that it's more important than ever for them now to try and make inroads into 40k. Because 40k mm -hmm. is... God help us all, slowly becoming more and more mainstream. A little bit more every year, and they can they, they smell fresh, unconquered ground. Because mm. Star Wars is already a leftist entity. Yeah? This myth of the, the wider audience, though, it's fucking stupid. If you abandon what makes your franchise good, you don't, lose, you don't gain a wider audience, you lose your core audience. And this is also why all of these larger franchises are doing worse and worse. Star Wars mm. is doing worse and worse. They tried to um, to re-establish He-Man. And you know what? That trailer, you know, the I, uh, I'm oh, waiting for Hero. It looked so good, didn't it? It looked, it looked so great. good. There was it so looked much, and things, great. Kevin Smith, he's a Gen Xer of about my age, and I was thinking, okay, he's going to get it. He's going to get it. Oh, God, this looks like it could be amazing. Kevin Smith might actually understand why He-Man was watchable. You know, he might actually... But no, he had to make it subversive and progressive. Is that okay? All right. Disappointed, yeah. Kevin. Disappointed. And all it succeeded was in completely and utterly burying He-Man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, and... The thing that annoyed me so much about that as well was the quality of the animation. The quality of, like, the visual representation of the universe was staggering it looked so good it was oh no how could you fuck this up how could you do it and they fucked it up because they didn't want he-man to be the hero anymore simple yeah, as it's feminism. the same what they're doing with the space marines right now they want the poster yeah. child to be theirs yeah. And that, that tweet where the, the, the leftist was going, no, we want it because you have it. That was the real mask-off moment. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the truth of why we're even discussing this. You know, They want it because they don't have it and you do. And that's, that's really the ultimate thing about all of this, is that this is something, really, that they view, and in a, in a way I think there is some truth to this, that it is for men, it is for boys, you know, it's for the lads. 
This this is a special institution that is for men. And that is the thing that gets under the skin of the feminists. You know, there's a connection that you have with the institution of the Space Marines that is exclusive to you as a man. And the women are not given access to it. Okay, I'm sorry you're upset by that, but actually I don't I feel that, that should be defended on that ground. It's okay for the men to have something that is just for men. Even if it's something as silly as a fantasy chapter of warriors in a plastic toy game. That's how that's how ruthless their jihad against men and male spaces is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It is the the idea of conquest. They yes. want this thing to be theirs now. And it irks them that it isn't. And it yes. again, it's also the, the entity on the horizon. They've sucked mm. Star Wars dry. He-Man is dead and con. Every mm. Rings of Power is currently strangling the, uh, mm. the, uh, the legacy of Tolkien. And there's yeah. 40k. Like, hey, we would like to be mainstream too. And the, the thing about it as well is that Despite Games Workshop's best efforts, the soul of 40k is still generally intact. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, okay, great. You know, they, they haven't been able to back down from the grim darkness. And actually, from a progressive point of view, the fact that the Space Marines are purely male is very grim dark. And so, it fit, you know, they, they have been unable to undermine the law or the universe itself. And it's like, that's terrible for you, but uh, I still enjoy the property because of that. A terrible tragedy, no doubt. For them. I'm looking forward to what the next iteration of the female Space Marine argument is going to be, because um, this almost feels final. Finally. It's like, okay, you've exhausted all of the, the substantive arguments. You've exhausted all of the rogue traitor pieces of half-forgotten nonsense. And you've finally yes. arrived at my headcanon. Yes. That, I mean, and this, I, I can't, it's hard to imagine what a weaker argument would look like for this, actually. So it does seem that you are right. This is like the final phase of the female Space Marine argument. It is just my head cannon. It's like, okay, fuck your head cannon. I'm not obliged to in indulge in your head cannon by the definition of what a head cannon is. So you've failed on every regard. What now? Now, I guess we go for the two lost Primarchs and start figuring out some way to make them into females. <laughs> who's who's coming back next, do you think? Well, there's been a bunch of talk about it, but uh, the lion seems to be the most likely that people keep asking for. Mm. I mean, I'm and he is it. still alive. I, I hate the lion story where, oh, is the lion still alive? Yeah, he is. Oh, why isn't he out there? Uh, well, he's he's crying like a bitch in his fortress. Mm. Really? <laughs> that's, mm. uh, that's an incredibly poor fucking ending for a hero. For a character called the lion. Yes. Yeah. I, someone sent me a 3D printed uh, model of Lionel Johnson. And the thing is, I was looking and thinking, oh, this, and it is an amazing model. I was thinking, oh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to paint it yet. I'm going to paint it when I'm fucking godly at painting. Um, but I might, I might get around to it soon. So it really, I, I've, I've got to the point now where it's about time. Cause at the moment, the things I'm painting, I'm painting to be desk, uh, you know, tabletop ready and tabletop, uh, competent. So they look, they look pretty good, but I could spend a lot more time on them if I wanted. Um, but I don't because I want to play with them. So, uh, yeah, I, I might uh, I might get round to the epic project that is Lionel Johnson. Uh -huh. Maybe it turns out that the lion was uh, female all along. At least that would make a certain amount of sense. <laughs> well, I mean, he's got long hair, isn't he? So, you know. Yep, cries a lot, ha sleeps howls, all day. Howls, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I think that is about it for this video. I mean, there, this... There's not even really an argumentation to be made, right? It's like, what we're doing is more trying to interpret the rationale for even going through with this suicide rather than the method itself. Well, I mean, we've literally got to the point where he's saying, well, this is just what I've made up in my head. It's like, okay. I mean, we, we the, the good thing about the female space marine argument is, as we were saying before we started, it's so solid in favor of the there can't be female space marines 
but it's actually kind of embarrassing now how desperate the progressives have become with it. Um, and so it's just kind of sad, you know? So since uh, I'm sure you've got to go fairly soon, since it's pretty late over there. I do, yeah, I do. I'll just do a control F for Sargon to see if I can find any uh, questions for you specifically, okay? Sure. Uh, the Real Horsenator says, Greetings, Arch and Sargon. Sargon, your D&D Crusaders has been my all-time favorite RP. I still watch it all the time and needle Arch and Dev about it. Well, there's, there's, there's nothing to say that in about six months, seven months' time, we can't pick it up again, actually. Um, the, the reason I, I will be able to reveal the reason why for the past four years I haven't been able to do it um, and why all my time has been taken up with other things. But actually, it's not beyond the realms of possibility that something could begin again. Hmm. That's very interesting. We should discuss system, though, because uh, D&D and their open gaming license, mm, I'd rather... Well, not... yes. Uh, yeah, obviously I'm, I'm abreast of the issues with uh, Dungeons & Dragons at the moment, and um, I'm more than happy to uh, make considerations in that regard. Oh, there you go. Maybe, maybe, chat. Uh, Mr. Twizzard Frenzy also says, Hey, Sargon, when's the next 40k miniature painting stream going to be? Well, that's... Uh, you, uh, you have to ask Az and uh, Rikita Law, because um, like I was painting my Dark Eldar and my Eldar during my Dark Reapers during this very stream. So uh, I, I actually paint a lot um, because for me, painting is the, it's a genuinely therapeutic act. Like in the, the actual act of painting, when you've spent a, bit, a bunch of time, like there's something about the, Locke Lock had this thing about um, property becomes property when you mix your labor with it, right? And there, there, there's something about that, the mixing of labor to turn a thing into something it wasn't previously that is the process of your personal investment in it, right? And I tell you what, I'm, I'm really invested in my armies when I'm playing 40k. Part of it is because of the amount of time and effort I've spent in painting them. And so I get a lot of satisfaction out of having the finished product because I'm then more invested when I'm playing the game. And also the actual physical act of mixing my labor, the painting of it, is a nice and pleasant thing to do because I know that I'm working towards a good end. And so, and I've got a physical thing that lasts essentially forever at the end of it, you know, so I can always just put it aside and it's always going to be there. So I, I'm really into the painting things. It's, you know, it's, it's stress relieving as well. And it, there's a good reason to do it. And so I've been, like I said, just painting a lot, actually, you know, <laughs> so it's ask, ha harass them on Twitter. Obviously don't not take YouTube. That that's a joke. It's not really <laughs> harassing. Um, but you know, tweet at them and they, come on painting stream when, because I, I paint like almost every night, basically. There you are. You know what to do, chat. Just uh, don't harass them, because, you know, terms of service ever stricter. Yeah, yeah. You can't make jokes on YouTube anymore. Uh, I like the fact that we thought we were living under the sword of Damocles in 2018. Oh, God, we didn't know how good we had it. <laughs> Did not know. Eric just says, question to Sargon, will you get Raging Golden Eagle and Bobby Q on the Lotus Eaters to talk with Connor and Harry about the lolly question? I mean, I prefer not to, because I don't really think that there's much legitimacy to the other side of the lolly argument. Um, the problem is the question of representation. Uh, it's and the argument isn't it should be illegal. Obviously, making drawings illegal is stupid, right? And no one, I don't think Connor has made the argument to make drawings illegal. Uh, the problem is the person who enjoys the drawings is someone who really needs to think about the kind of person that they are and the kind of virtue or vice that they're cultivating. Because, again, think about what you are making present with your art. As we've been talking about in this, all art is a question of representing a form of reality, and it makes it, as Aristotle pointed out, a rhetorical argument in favour of this thing. And so from that framing, Lolly does have the aspect of fictional paedophilia. And so I don't really support that. And I think it's kind of gross. And I've always thought it was gross. So I would recommend that, you know, people should think about the kind of habits they're cultivating, really. 
I think actually the uh, the two sides will agree on a surprising amount of stuff, and it'll come down to the moralistic interpretation of it. Well, I can only assume that people who like Lolly have had no real experience with children, actually. Um, because... If it... anything, I would imagine that people that like Lolly would actually actively dislike children. Possibly. I, I don't really know, but like... It... it... It is definitely, in my view, immoral. Um, but that's only because I have children, and so I you know, have contact with them every day. And to sexualize children, even fictionally, is very disgusting. And I think something shameful. So, you know, I'm not saying it should be illegal. It's a drawing. Obviously, it shouldn't be illegal. But I do think it's immoral. Uh, Prince of Crown says, Love you, Contenarch. Your vids and Conrad Curse and Law Guard are your best. Play Dead by Daylight with Kibbs, Sargon, and company. Something as killer. I want to see you go batshit insane as a knight or orny. Uh, that's a survival game, I think, with uh, monster things. What's it called? Uh, Dead by Daylight. Hmm, okay, I've never heard of it. I think the gist is one player plays um, the monster, and then everybody else is survivors, and it's the monster needs to try oh, and kill right, them, and the survivors okay. need to try and get away. Right, right, okay. I believe. I never played it myself. Hmm. I think there's always been a problem with these kind of like lopsided um, multiplayer games. Uh, the balance is really hard to get, right? To make it yes. fun to be both sides. Yes. It's a good idea, but it's I just I've never seen it executed properly. I'm not saying this one hasn't though. God damn it. I hate the part of YouTube where it it doesn't like load all of the super chat at once. Yes. Isn't it such a curse? Uh, there we go. Glow in the Dark Sargon. Can you say from a spiritual point of view that when you paint, you transfer your energy and life to it, giving it value, for you have to use your time from your limited lifespan to make it? I mean, you could frame it that way. Uh, I. Th this is why I was kind of... Uh forming on the Lockean mixing argument because there's something there is something slightly transcendent about it you know it's yours you know at the end of it it's it, it, it's uniquely yours you know this it's not something that could have been mass produced you know only i could have put this particular work into it and did put this particular work into it and so it will always be unique and so you could argue that in that way yeah Hmm. Brendan Hoover claims that he had a question for you. I'm sorry, Brendan. Um, I tried to control F your name, and s YouTube is not actually showing it up for me here. That's the thing. I thought it was all clever. Like, oh, we'll just control F Sargon. That'll bring up the questions for him, right? Except YouTube <laughs> is shit. I mean, I've got another, like, 15 minutes or so, so we can just go through a few. All right. I'll do that then. It's late over in England, uh, chat. So if you do have a question, uh, ask it now, and I'll pick that out of uh, order in the Super Chat, so I'll keep an eye on it. Uh, Blade Trainer says, if it'll sell more models, GW will change it. Well, that's the interesting thing, isn't it? Because there was um, yes. that other old excerpt from the guy who used to work at GW who said that they tried to sell female space marine models which is not true they tried to sell female adventurer models difference and nobody wanted them sure and why wouldn't they want them probably because they just don't make sense i'd imagine exactly they ruin the verisimilitude of the universe what i i want elite space soldiers you know like i want the best of the best mm-hmm it just looked out of place, probably, is what I'd guess. But I tell you what, the, the, the commentator, he's completely correct. If Games Workshop thought it would make them money, they'd do it. But the thing is, they are aware that on this issue, their own core audience is essentially holding a knife to their throat. You know, They know the outrage will be palpable, because essentially their, their main audience is neckbeards. Yeah. Okay. Like, to put this into perspective, right? The, the Templar Institute last time I saw had lost like damn near 10,000 subs. 
And that's from a YouTube channel. Like, you, people have very good relationship with YouTube channels. People tend to have yeah. that, um, that, oh, God, what's the term again? The, um, I forget it. The, the Parasocial relation- relationship. Thank you very much. Parasocial relationship, yes. Hmm. Which is why most videos have like a 99% positive rate. Because most people mm-hmm. watch the content because they enjoy the content. Duh. Yeah. To shed 10,000 subs over an issue, that's that needs to be pretty controversial. Yes. And for Games and Workshop... And also show ill will on the part of the person. Yes. And for Games Workshop to do that, like, right now, Warhammer Plus, their subscription service, is not earning money. And they've put mm. they put £2.3 million pounds into that thing in R&D alone. They are not in a position to piss off their fan base right now. Hmm. But they, they, they will. They know that they're get, they're going to see a massive drop in just sales from the core audience. Because I'm telling you, I I would probably stop buying 40k. I'll just I I would change to BattleTech or something like that. You know, I'd be like, you know, I because what it shows is that the thing isn't about the thing. The people in charge of it are being essentially dishonest and lying to my face, and I'm not having that. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to pay for wokeness. Absolutely. Why would you? There are uh, plentiful other alternatives. It'll be sad, yeah. but the thing is, I was a fan of 40k. If 40k is no longer 40k, why am I sticking yep. around? I'm not. I'm not paying for a skin suit. Uh, Glow in the Dark says this is Sam Harris level of arguments. If only the facts of the matter supported me, then I would be right. But they don't, so we need to obscure <laughs> that. <laughs> that's that's a good point. That's a good point. Only the facts agreed with me. Then my headcanon would be real. It's <laughs> a pretty neat way of viewing it. Yeah. Uh, Troy Neen says, If Drukari can turn Eldar into humans, does this stop Slanesh eating their souls? Can they be half Eldar? Unlike d and I don't know of any book in uh, 40k canon that talks about which species can breed which witch. So, I don't know, my dude. D and D didn't actually do that. They put out an encyclopedia of which uh, species could intermix. Well, they have to, surely. We're gonna have half orcs and half elder and mm-hmm. half giants. It becomes a relevant question. Yep. Clearly, somebody's got to be able to have sex with somebody else. Yeah. I mean, I would have just like just say the different species. Like, obviously, an, a giant can't have a baby with a human. Why are we having this conversation? Uh, Carl Farn says, Sargon, I feel the need to point out to you that Lolly just means young girl and that the vast majority of depictions are non-sexual. Okay, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about sexual depictions. Uh, Horwitz Feinberg and Horwitz says, uh, no kibs for this podcast, Arch. Oh, well, I'm glad you got sardine in a car. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that was actually kind of funny. I never thought about that. Well, I mean, I'm the president of the Pete Hitchens fan club, so uh, I wear it with pride. Oh, yeah. Uh, to help you shred these wiki readers. And honestly, like, it's not because I, I hate little Kyle. It's because I figured he wouldn't find this topic particularly interesting. No, he's not like a 40k law guy, so... No. Uh, Sancho1788 says, Adeptus lasagna. Mm, tasty. There might be a better canon argument for that, frankly, than female space marines. Do space marines eat lasagna? Um, maybe. I have yet to Is see anything... any conclusive evidence against them eating lasagna. Yeah. I mean, given the number of humans that exist in the 41st millennium, surely some of them are of Italian descent? Yeah. Some of them are not white. <laughs> uh, Rath says, question for both. What is your opinion on 3D printing and its effect on the miniature tabletop? Uh, well, I personally think 3D printing is great and you should get a 3D printer. Same. I, I think once, um, once companies, winks, begin understanding the positive power of 3d printing it'll become the new standard like so here's here's a bit of an inside scoop for my demon prince right 
Um, because it's a Zench Demon Prince, I didn't want the bat wings. I wanted uh, feathered wings. And I was looking at Games Workshop's models, and I couldn't I couldn't find anything that looked appropriate. And the, the closest thing I could find, I think, is Gal Vorbrak or something um, on this giant vulture. But the thing is, I think the vulture's too big for the Demon Prince. And so, John, our producer... He got himself a 3D printer a while ago, and he printed me off some uh, feathered wings to that we made to what I think is going to be the right scale. The new, the new Demon Prince hasn't actually arrived yet, but uh, it will do soon, next week, I think. And the, these wings look amazing. They're so good. And they were his first print, and they came out perfect. Absolutely perfect. And it's like, right, this is the future. Like, the technology is, is, is here. You know, I mean, it took it took him an, an evening to do it. He did it overnight or something. But the technology is here. It works and it is as good as anything Games Workshop can do with plastic. Absolutely. No, 3D printers are great. And the simple fact is games went hard digital. Game stores are a relic of the past. Yeah. And even where you have to go to one and buy a game, there would just be a yeah. CD code inside. There is no reason why miniatures should not and could not go the exact same way. It is, it's just yeah. so much easier. Yeah. And it, it, you are exactly right. Relic of the past, that's the thing. There's no question that progress is dragging Games Workshop into the future. They can't help it. You can't undo it. The technology is here. It is affordable as well. Like it's only a few hundred pounds for a half-decent 3D printer, and the resin costs peanuts. You know, it's like, sorry, your your business model is over now. You know, when, when you know, give it five or ten years, and they will start seeing the cut into their own profits. I think so too. There's uh, there's no point in fighting it. No, no, they should they should figure out how to make their own SDLs or something. You know, over overcharge me for those for fuck's sake. Uh, rare fox did you and just uh, as a quick thing there i'm actually not angry at games workshop's prices either like i don't mind viewing 40k as a luxury hobby you know i understand i'm paying for the ip you know that's all fine i get it you know if you want to charge me 10 pound or whatever for a bunch of 3d files of space marines do it you know absolutely why not uh, Rare Fox says, read my question and show the fan art to Sargon. Uh, <laughs> where's the question? Where's the fan art? Another good question. Ah, there we go. Like, just put the question in your super chat, my dude. It'd be way easier. <laughs> Uh, Sargon, we all know that exists a slippery slope. Then what should be the reason for people to believe you that you're not justifying a slippery slope to ban drawings? I just don't think we should ban drawings. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't think we should ban adultery, but I don't think we should do it either. That's the thing, because... I agree with Sargon's position on this. Like, if you want to find Loli uh, disgusting or bad for you or whatever, go ahead, so long as you don't make it illegal. Now, the argument of the slippery slope is that the next guy in line might then say, oh, uh, I don't like it, and I don't want to protect the right for it to be legal, and then the next guy goes like, okay, well, I'm going to ban it. Sure, but maybe that'll happen, but what can you do? Exactly. Like, that's not... Well, it doesn't uh... make Loli moral. That's not really an argument for Sargon to engage with. Yeah. I mean, there are, there are lots of um, moral and practical arguments as to why banning a drawing, even the most hideous of drawings, depicting the worst things in the world, should not be illegal, right? It's, it's my right to draw what I want. It is my labor. It is my thing. I should have the, the ability to do it. But that doesn't mean that what I'm drawing is a moral act, or the fact that I'm enjoying consuming something is a moral act. That's a different question. And on the subject of lolly, I think that the answer is self-evident. And also, the practical argument is just, how are you going to stop me from drawing things, retard? <laughs> and the final art is... There we go. That's remarkably tame for rare, by Rare Fox standards. I'm sorry, where am I looking to see this? I'll send it. 
There you go. Rare Fox is uh, one of the artists that I've got doing stuff for me. He's an enormous furry, and this is very restraint for him. Okay, well, um, very nice. Rare Fox is a good boy. Oh, God, see, now, Rare Fox, you threw me off my entire, like, back-end thing here. I will hurt you for this. Short is asking for the tweet that they said... We want it because you have it. Um, I think, Dev, it's in my deep thing. Let me find it for you. Is it the one, um, the one with little anime pictures? The I one that says we remember. want female space marines. Space marines are the main characters in post childhood franchise. Make them have girls. Yeah, that one. Yeah, is that one? Okay, then I've got yeah. it on relative hand right i can send it over to dev little dev it's like source please oh, dev okay dev we have the source now what dev. <laughs> yeah yeah now what now what communist you think we came unprepared for this conversation dev we've been invested in this for many a year now my communist noises There, I'll send it over to Dev. I'll be nice and acquiesce to his uh, his communist request, his demands. Mm. Uh, Dev also says all male space marines is still in still inclusive. It includes trans women. Hmm. No, it doesn't. The communist denial of sex again. Yeah, because we we didn't say man or woman. We said male or female. Yeah, simple Dev. Nice try, though, commie. Yeah, good attempt, communist. Yeah. <laughs> oh, poor Dev. Sometimes I almost feel bad for him. Yeah, that was a good try, but he knows better. He knows better. Uh, Arm Bridge says, Sargon, are you or the Lotus Eaters going to do a uni tour? Well, I mean, never say never, but I don't have anything planned at the moment. The problem is platforming. I mean, a lot of them are just afraid to hear what we have to say. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I'm sure Saga would be up for it, but uh, would the university be? Yeah. Uh, Shake Silver says, uh, Kyle, Connor's view on porn alone normalizing degeneracy won't start with bans, but why wouldn't he go there? And how is it different from violent video games? Well, I mean, there's zero evidence that video games cause or incite or habituate a person to violence. However, there's overwhelming evidence that pornography does do things to people's brains that is bad for them. So, I don't know. They're not the same thing. I tell you, Sargon, the lolly debate's a big one. <laughs> there's it a lot does, of people who feel does. very strongly about this. And I, I think it is... A lot of people who are worried about the uh, the freedom of expression part of it. Sure, and I'm I'm not saying that that isn't a concern. Um, obviously, I'm in favor of free expression, um, but the video game and porn thing they're just not the same. You know, porn actually affects the way that you look at women as partners, whereas video games are just kind of essentially the same as playing sports, it seems. Uh, Mark James says, For Sargon, already as Arch, would you rather accept Primaris Space Marines as canon or adopt female Space Marines and remove Primaris? Oh, I'd keep Primaris. Yeah, same. <laughs> the lesser of two evil. I mean, we, we do accept Primaris as canon. The question is whether you like it or not. And I don't. <laughs> but yeah, I still, I still to. accept that it's there. I just hate the fact that it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dev says, oh my god, Sargon is now pro March of Progress. Am I? The communist tries to bend you to his will. Do not let him. His ways is insidious. I'm not sure how anyone could take the interpretation that I'm pro-progress. Uh, Nathan Hildeman says, 
Sargon, the amount of upcharge on GW's plastic is so high that if they were to make the same amount of money they do currently on models, they would need to charge a hundred pounds per pose on STLs. Uh, quite possibly. But that's just a, a reflection of what the future is going to look like. Yep. Now, the, the, the thing is, uh, DW's business model is absurd and get good on them for getting away with it, I guess, but yeah, the upmark well, they put on things is hilarious. But what it shows you is the value of art, right? Mm -hmm. The fact that so many people are willing to pay what Games Workshop is demanding so regularly, the fact that I'm prepared to, you know, that we're all prepared to, shows that the art itself is valuable. And that's fine. You know, and I accept that, you know, Games Workshop's art is valuable. And it's, you know, it's something I personally desire. And I'm prepared to spend like fifty pounds a month. I actually have a, a spending limit on my habits. And, uh, you know, there we go. Absolutely. The universe is what makes that plastic valuable. Like, nobody would yeah. pay £100 for five pieces of plastic. But for five <laughs> Space Marine lieutenants? Sure. Well, I wouldn't pay for Space Marine lieutenants. <laughs> And yes. John says, Sargon, would you ever do more of these speak to the public things like you did during the UKIP candidacy attempt? They were very entertaining. I'm certainly not against the idea. I mean, I had a great time doing it. So the 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 the, the question really is kind of the reason to do it, right? You know, what what would be the impetus? But I'm I'm not against it at all. Mm -hmm. Do also let me know uh, when you need to uh, to go with Sargon on. Just yeah, keep well, going well. until you tell me. No, no, keep going for a while. I mean, like, you know, five, ten minutes. Yep. Mark James says, Sargon, embrace the ten matriarchs, each stronger than Neoth and 21st through 30th <laughs> legions, coming soon to the heresy. Well, I mean, you know, if, if that becomes canon, I always have options. Uh, matriarchs. <laughs> And like the guy was saying, actually, we've always got the option of retreating into our own head cannon. You know, I, I mean, we can do that. I just can't say that it's canon. Yeah. I mean, hell, I've halfway done that already. Like, I used to buy yeah. so many Black Library books because I loved the stories of the 41st millennium. Mm. I just don't anymore because I'm like, OK, you can tell me another story about primaries, are you? Oh, fine. <laughs> the, my, my wife is reading the latest Stephen King book. And she's about halfway through and she's like, I can't stand Stephen King anymore. He was her favorite author and always had been. And now it's just Trump this, Trump that, Trump the other. And, and I'm just like, fucking hell. Apparently the story itself is still good, but it's just littered with woke references. And she's just sick of it. She's not even a very political person. She doesn't want to talk about politics at all. She wants to hear about the serial killer or whatever Stephen King's writing a story about. You know? Well, that's the thing too. Like, the people who are non-political are the first to get annoyed about this because they're not there oh, yeah. for that. Why would yeah. they be? Yeah. The, the the political people weren't going to approach this at all. They already knew this was enemy territory. Mm -hmm. It's stupid. Yeah. Uh, Tonushi says, Fluidity and arbitrariness breed passivity and disinterest, and change for its own sake is the pursuit of infinite novelty without substance. Yep. Yeah. Completely correct. It's it, it, is, it is the rigidity and lack of uh, permissiveness that makes something worth it. Like, boundaries are the things that construct the universe, in any universe. You know, if if... Like, for example, like in Lord of the Rings, if it were some other way, it wouldn't be Lord of the Rings and it wouldn't be interesting. You know, you know it is the fact that it is particular. If the Lord of the Rings began with like Aragorn going like, we are going to Mordor to distract the Dark Lord's eye. And then the next scene, yeah. there's five new characters in a completely different land going on a completely different quest. Yeah. I'd be like, why are you telling me this? Yeah, what the fuck? I really want to know what Aragorn was going to doing it's um it's also a large part of the reason why uh comics are failing in comparison to manga because oh, superman yeah. has been rebooted like 700 times now meanwhile uh, oh, a manga God, like kingdom yeah. for example is on chapter 750 it's the same yeah. fucking universe i tell you i am so sick of batman origin stories or just comic oh. book origin stories 
oh here's here's another origin story for the joker or for batman so i i don't care i know it you know give me a fucking new story it's I hate it. Like, Superman's origin story must be the second most well-known to Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Absolutely. they decided to reject Henry Cavill to do another Superman origin story. Like, why? Why? <laughs> like, the, you are exactly right. Like, there's, there are some characters that are so ubiquitous and f just famous. We do not need their origin stories. No one needs their origin stories. Yeah, like, it, it was fun to begin with, but we are so past that now. I, I just want a, I just want an old-school Superman story, but Superman is just fucking Superman, and he does yeah. some Superman stuff. He has a villain to defeat, perhaps? Yep. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe even a bad guy. Oh, yeah. Revolutionary. Uh, it's crazy, isn't it? Maybe he could be somebody other than Trump, too, just to really hammer it out of the park. <laughs> you hear Stephen King reeing in the background. But no, absolutely. Like the limitations of a universe and the consistency of a universe is what makes it interesting. That's why people yeah. come back. If you constantly change it, people have no tether. And this also it's limitations breed I innovation, right? To come up with a new and innovative story or te uh, take on a universe adds to the universe. It doesn't detract from it. You know, but you've got to work within what's already established for it to be interesting, mm -hmm. for it to be novel, for it to tickle the part of your brain that goes, ooh, okay, I'm listening. Because otherwise, you could just make up any old bollocks, and it's not in any way connected to what came before, and it's not interesting in the slightest. Yeah. <laughs> this is why a Batman, the character, is like 80 years old. Because people are interested yeah. in Batman, but you can only tell the same story about Batman so many fucking times. Hmm. Uh, HR says, will Sargon do more 40k videos? Love and politics of 40k? Was a shock. Wasn't expecting it on the Lotus Eaters. Plus, my hobby group is going woke. Well, I'm sorry your hobby group's going woke. Um, only, only where it insects with politics, basically. Um, but I think, I mean, it would have to be something very novel... And a very novel attack for, I think, my deep think not to cover it. Because I, I think I've got them just bang to rights with it. You know, I've got the philosophical foundations of storytelling uh, really well laid out in it. And I don't see where they can go. And the guy, the fact that the guy's like, well, I just ma I, I made it up in my own head. Well, that seems to be the last refuge. Because otherwise, I think they've just got nothing. So I doubt there'll be much need, really. It really does. Like w when you have finally arrived at, I made it the fuck up. Yes. <laughs> it came to me in a dream. Oh well, brilliant. Uh, Stephen Knizek says next GW Codex will explain how the female Primarchs of the lost uh, Roman numerals Eleventh uh, Legion and her all female Astartes died out due to bad pilots flying them into a sun. Well, at least that would be a a canonical end, a logical one. Yeah. I mean. They would also make see in the Horus Heresy books. Whenever they bring up the lost Primarchs, they're like, "Don't talk about them. We promise never to talk about them. That's shame." It would be great if they were just women, and they're also just like, "God, that was disgusting." Do you remember when we had sisters like you? That'd be really funny. <laughs> you know, game, Games Workshop are on the precipice at this point. They're like, "Look, we could ruin everything, or we could just be normal." Uh, and it's up to you, Games Workshop. It's up to you. <laughs> the, 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 the desperate desire to just shit all over the table. Oh, God, you can feel it. You can feel it in the air, can't you? They're just like, look, maybe we could just shit on our plate for a bit. It's like, maybe. Would anyone notice? Would anyone really be revolted if we, if we just dumped all over it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what, what about just a little turd on our plate? Can we get away with that? Oh, Jesus. Uh, Kendrick 50 says, Sargon, who at the Lotus Eaters are you forcing to watch Velma for a segment? Oh, God, that would be cruel. Well, I mean, I haven't forced anyone to watch anything, really. Um, the thing is, like, the Velma thing, like, who really cares about Velma? Like, who who, who finds Scooby-Doo something tremendously interesting that they have to be involved in? 
you know and the, the answer is like nobody really nobody was thinking about scooby-doo and so what this is is kind of um necromancy that the left are doing and it's because they have no way of con creating something new they just can't do it they've got no internal generative principles that says we have a story inside us that we have to tell all they can do is say we have to parasite be parasitic on something else that's all their options are and so it's like okay well what can we be a parasite on now what can we be a parasite on now and so like after she hulk where they literally wrote the the loser writing stuff into the story to be losers and get dressed down by their own characters that's the most revealing thing that needed to be done and so it shows that all of progressive media from this point onwards is just going to be confession it's all going to be projection oh this is how we hate ourselves essentially we hate you we hate these things we hate every property we get our hands on we just hate we can't construct and so there's there's just no point. I haven't even bothered watching it. I've seen like a, a few videos talking about it. Everyone's like, oh my God, this is the worst progressive thing yet. And it's like, yeah. And it will be forever. And they've shown us this. Yeah. No, no, the thing is, the Scooby-Doo show isn't, it's not even Scooby-Doo. Like Scooby-Doo is not even in the yeah. show. Like it's, it is literally yeah. just an attempt Bound to be show. like, could could we get some attention out of this? Could we somehow yeah. use this dead thing to prop ourselves up for a little bit? Yeah, it's fan fiction. It's literally fan fiction. That's all a progressive is capable of making is fan fiction. And once, as the Templin Institute has shown, once you realize this, once they, you know, once they've been so desperate that that's all they can say is just explicitly, well, this is just my own headcanon about Velma. Okay, I don't give a fuck about your headcanon about Velma. I just don't care, you know? So I've got no interest in watching it. Mm -hmm. uh, Nathan Hillman says, Sargon, on the subject of headcanon, I play Age of Shitmar. I just only play armies that existed in fantasy. Imagine <laughs> that all the garbage new factions are chaos mutants when I'm forced to fight them. Respectable. It's a good approach. Oh, God, yeah, I, hate it. I can Age understand why you do that. It is, a, it is a sad joke, Age of Sigmar. See, I, I would have got into Warhammer Fantasy uh, now. Um, I could tell that my son was really interested in it, but like no one else I know plays it. And the thing is, I probably would have got into it f with him, but I, I just can't be bothered with the Age of Sigma thing. It just doesn't seem to have the same uh, resonance to it, you know? It doesn't. Warhammer Fantasy, I always thought it looked cool. The problem with Age of Sigma is it's too fucking much like in age of, in, in warhammer there is the occasional huge war where you're like massive armies waging war mm. fighting wars besieging cities and it's like okay that's an event that is a major mm. historical happenstance in age of sigma the the book i read about the skaven was like oh yeah uh, the skaven have already conquered like ten thousand worlds and they have uh, they've got what? interplanetary networks of tunnels gnawing through time and space now it's like Oh, do they? Oh, yeah. that makes sense. And the same with Chaos, too. Chaos is like, it's ravaged a million worlds. There's a countless fortresses of brass. And like, okay, no, nothing matters, does it? Like, Yeah. I mean, the, the, and this is the thing. Like, it, there's nothing wrong with reducing scale. And this is, um, oh, what was it? The, the, this is the eternal problem with superhero movies, in fact. It's like, oh, we have to save the world from this person. And now this person. Oh, now we have to save the universe, the galaxy. You know, it's like, look, there's... The, there's nothing wrong with having a more personal story that's at a smaller scale. That doesn't make it less momentous. You just have to more personalize it to the people involved in it. I mean, you know, like if it, well, if it's thing. if it's just like a duke, right, who's being invaded or you know his lands are being ravaged by uh, a, you know mobs of skeletons, that's not less important to that guy. In you know that's not like so he's not going to be like well you know I mean it's only it's only one duchy isn't it you know to to him from his perspective this is everything and you can make this tremendously momentous if you want you know there's nothing that stops that yeah and I want to point out Superman didn't start out saving the world Superman just started up yeah. sa saving Lois Lane yeah 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 
Simple as. It's just it's one person from stupid shit like a bank robbery or something. Yeah, but it's a relatable story because what would you do in his place? That's what yeah. you're asking yourself. And the larger you make the story, the more disconnected people become. Mm. Like, saving the world once. Like, okay, cool. That's pretty awesome. Like uh, if, when the threat is big enough, you know, it's a huge yeah. threat. Wow. <laughs> Take it to the next mm. level. But then you're saving the universe or the galaxy. It's like, okay, but now, now it's too big. Now nobody really even cares anymore. Hmm. And the, the, the thing is as well, it's got to be the last thing you do. Mm -hmm. like it's it's got to be the know, end of your story. Yeah, exactly. Because obviously, a, you know, a level one hero can't save the universe. So it's your level hundred heroes are off saving the universe. Okay, great. And now we're going to retire them. But they don't know how to retire them. They don't know what to do. You know, they've got nothing. They've got no way of creating new things. Mm hmm. Which is why, again, we are stuck with superheroes that are older than us by a factor of like two or three. Mm. It's like, all right, mm. where do we go from here? And this, is, again, is the beauty of manga, honestly. Like, Kimetsu no Yaiba, Demon Slayer, ended when they finally defeated the big villain. They didn't then find a bigger villain. The, movie, the, the, the yeah. series stopped. Which is totally reasonable. There's no problem with that. It's beneficial. It's what should happen. Yes. Right, I think I am going to have to head off now, man, since it's uh, half past. But, right. um, yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. I think this has been very uh, illuminating. It's been fun. Thank you for uh, for coming and spending the time with well, me. My pleasure. Always, uh, always ready to keep the gate because we have to do it every single time. We must. It is an honourable and moral thing. Yes. Right, thanks for joining us, chat. I'll see you all later. Bye. Goodbye, Simon. And now it is just me, chat. <laughs> all right. Let's see if I can uh, get through some uh, some more of these. I do have a thing with Dev in like an hour and a half odd. So I'll do my best to get through everything, but no promises uh, this time because I do have a prior engagements with the communist and you know how uppity communists get if you ignore them for too long uh harry the human substitute arankar says honestly turning someone into a super soldier should be hard in fiction the emperor was great but he was not as smart as chozo race from the metroid series here yeah, he also says and they know that male and females take different resources to bring up well, that's the thing, yeah. Super soldiers should be difficult, because if you don't make them difficult, then there is no reason to not have super soldiers. Like, if you can create an infinite quantity of super soldiers, surely you'll just create the super soldiers. Duh. And hell, even in, um, in Star Wars, this is something that the uh, Star Wars series doesn't get quite enough credit for. The stormtroopers aren't the baseline infantry. It's the Imperial Army. The stormtroopers are supposed to be... The elites, the heavy hitters, the big boys. The issue is that the universe never manages to portray them as such in large parts due to the mistakes of the first uh, few movies where the infamous Stormtrooper aim came into being. Federation Prime says, um, Temp Inst is not only a leaf, he is the worst kind, a Torontian. Alberta must ditch Confederation. The internal race wars of the Canadians are sadly beyond me, but I'll take your word for it. Kill Team Hungry says, If you have two choices from which you could make a super soldier, why would you pick the weaker base? The Imperium needs the strongest soldiers. Correct. Like, there is no, no pressing reason for why the Imperium needs to be inclusionary in this. Uh, Depths Walker says, Progenoid glands harvestable after 10 years, so a failure before is a net loss of gene seed. They succeed more frequently when closer to host genetics. That's a point too. Like, if you can't get out the progenoid glands, you will be losing gene seed. Best you can hope for is a one to one conversion rate, which is not good enough. Enigmatic says, Evening Arch is starting off my journey into 40k via Eisenhorn. Down the rabbit hole I go. Good. Long and glorious journey to you. Eisenhorn is a damn good book series, it really is. One of Dan Abnett's finest little creations. 
Uh, Glowy says, Sargon. Uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> that one came in after I'd uh, already sent him on his way. Uh, argument that the slippery slope will apply to Lolly is not a not that big of an issue, as culture is pro-degenerate, especially sexual pervasions right now. It is more likely that the pro-Lolly argument will apply the other way to justify CP based on trends. Potentially, but I think the distinction between the two are pretty big. Like, I doubt anyone who is defending Lolly, at least for the freedom of creation aspect of it, are then going to turn around and go like, oh yeah, kitty porn too. <laughs> I'd be surprised, but it could be an angle, sure. Glowy says they will probably go full brute force tactic and have law commissars if all else fails. They will burn Warhammer to the ground if they can't have it. Oh yeah, I'll tell you this. If female space marines do become canon, you will suddenly find a lot of feminists becoming very, very law puritanical. Again, which is why I don't believe the Templar Institute for a second when he says, oh, 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 if, uh, if, if I get in power, I'll totally defend your right to disagree. No, I, I don't believe he will. I straight up do not believe he will. And on Pro Vri says, while we're on the topic of canon, where did you get the idea that Tau sterilized entire human planets? Because I found was Dark Crusade. It was just a possibility, might not have happened, in a non-canon ending in a game of dubious canon anyway. Mostly because it is exactly the kind of thing that the Tau would do to a human population of that kind. Because if they can't control the human population, which there was every, every indication they couldn't because it was a war going on, then sterilization would absolutely be the kind of stuff that uh, the Tau would see as for the greater good. It is a sacrifice of a small minority to uh, help them out. Mm, yeah, yeah, I think it's still a fairly reasonable interpretation. Uh, HP Lovecraft's cat, I know what that means, says, Do you think the Temple Institute and their like are operating as agents for GW, or are the third parties working to use IPS for a gift prop? Or are they just a bunch of soy cuck oi o odin on their month progester on tablets? I don't even... <laughs> Syntax. I don't think they're being acted on by an external force. I'm sure the Temple Institute would love to be acted on by an external force, but I don't think that is what's happening. I think if that was happening, they would just go out and do it. Kitty says Ananemsky Bowden disowned this exact argument and has said his stuff on loyalists can be more or less dismissed entirely. Wow. <laughs> In which case, my respect for the man just increased many fold. I I don't like ADB. I, I, I don't. But if that is his position, then I like him a lot more right now, because the master of mankind was... Mm, hate that book. <laughs> hate that book a great deal. Uh, Glow in the Dark says, Uno reverse card, Temple Institute, might be biased, misinformed, or outright lying. Therefore, we can't take him on his word or his arguments as true. Correct. In fact, I think the the preponderance of evidence supports that assumption. Maranga 2 says, Ah, Cadians long ago conquered summer, took control. Uh, Sargon led his armies in chariots. They rolled by Euphrates River by the Euphrates River. I feel like that was supposed to be a song. Nick uh, Enquist says, Arch, don't you think it is possible that GW might bring back the two last Primarchs and make them female? Sure, it could happen. Um, it would undermine the entirety of the Horus Heresy, <laughs> like all of it. As even Malkador made the the comment that he he told the Emperor that he should have made them sisters. And that phrase too, where he's talking to is it, is it Gilliman or somebody, where he's like, "I told him he should have made you sisters," and the guy dismisses it as a joke, like, "Haha, that's very stupid." And he's like, "I wasn't joking." The thing is, brothers fight. But brothers fight openly. Making the Primarch sisters would not have uh, stopped the Horus Heresy. If anything, it would have just made it more cuntish initially. <laughs> like, I, that entire part of the book is like, this person has never seen sisters or even female friends before. Believe you me, they can be uh, 
hostile as well. Glow in the Dark says, peer reviewed doesn't mean it's true. That's correct as well. Uh, Nathan Hildeman, there is always a risk of forgetting why we gatekeep. That is why the gates of any fandom must be oiled from time to time with the blood of subversives. I mean, hey, it's not untrue. But for the sake of YouTube, I must uh, disavow. Uh, Harry the Human Substitute Aranka says, Also, a female space marine are bad for another reason. Fem space marines are, let's say, 15 times stronger than peak fitness man. Peach fitness. So a female space marine would be the same, but a female. So a male space, space marine would be, what, three times as strong? Why are we using girls again? Yes, that is kind of the problem. Why use the stock that is undoubtedly going to be Worse at this job, but better at the job of creating more recruits. Devil King 1994 says, If we can't trust canon law, then how do we even know there are space marines, or an emperor, or even the Imperium itself? Exactly. We must be able to put our faith in something, otherwise literally nothing exists. Which is a bit of a sad situation. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> <clears throat> Blade Trainer says, if they'll sell more models, GW will change it. That's true. Uh, Glow in the Dark says, I read that one. Uh, read that one too. There. Uh, no? Oh god, I started in the middle. This is going to be a problem for my little brain. Ah, uh, Tarek Tech Marine says, Arch, so if you had to, how would you tie both Primaris and the new tech, considering tech heresy, to 30k and a better intro into the 40k millennium? Uh, I don't know if there is necessarily a better way. Like stupid Magos did stupid things in secret for 10,000 years. I guess I would have made it take longer at least. I, I would have had this be something that Call finished in the absolute neck of time to save the Imperium. Rather than something he did in like... 50 years, and then spent the next 9,950 years just stacking up more space marines in freezers all over the world. Animate Acumen says they cannot acknowledge the author as god because they cannot acknowledge their being a god. The very concept is triggering to them. Perhaps. 47 Arbuck says, correct me if I'm wrong, Arch, but aren't the leagues of OTAN something separate from the squads? He references them like they're the same, but they seem completely different from one another. They are and they aren't. Like, the problem is, when GW reintroduced the squads in Necromunda, they look like squads. Whereas the League of OTAN don't look like squads. They look like something, as you say, completely different. But the inference is that they are squads but completely different squats than the squats we had. Shake's head. <laughs> uh, Lancelot652 says the Ecclesiarchy has no power over the Space Marines. They're outside the Emperor's chain of command. That's a good point too. Glow in the Dark. Uh, priests fight actual demons in Warhammer. I would not say any decree they would give is purely anti-female. They don't have any power over Space Marines. Again, correct. And why would they object to having female soldiers when they themselves use them? It's dumb. Video Hall Senator says, Greetings, Arch and Sargon. Uh, I'll be around that one. Uh, Boycott Warren Plus says, Hey, Arch, breed Sargon, kick Dev. Oh, we're getting feisty here. Uh, Mr. Twisted Frenzy. Hey, Sargon, when's the next 40k miniature painting stream? Read that one. Uh, Big Hell Helio? Big Helio. They could make Lady Space Marine meat shields. Oof, that'd be cruel. Just nail them to, to wooden boards and hold them up against incoming fire. Somehow, I don't think they would like that. Eric Just, a question to Sargon. Uh, I read that one. Uh, Harry the Human Substitute Aranka. Yes, the Ecclesiarchy, a higher religion army of tomboys, is against the girls fighting doubt. Yes, it does make a whole lot of sense. Prince of Crows. La Vicomte Arch, your videos are going to curse and log up. Read that one too. Uh, Cliff Knight. Cliff? 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 Cliff, Cliff, 3188. My head cannon is the same energy as my truth. Well, yes. That is literally what the argument boils down to. I think this is real. Or in this case, he doesn't even say he thinks this is real. It was just one long retreat of like, oh, oh yeah, this probably isn't real. But I'm going to make the argument anyways, because 
I am legitimately retarded. <laughs> I, I, I presume that's the, the rationale. I, I can't find another one, at least, that makes any more sense than that. Glow in the dark says, these people don't know anatomy. If you screw up one hormone, it destroys your body. Many die from the procedure, which shows that the demands on the body are extreme, and one thing off would kill the patient. Yes, again, space brain surgery is extraordinarily dangerous. Uh, not Alfarius donates $20 with no message, so maybe you were being mean with to Miss Susan. Uh, Gasmas Joe, just wanting to re about wanting your old Dominion Fire video series back. I'll release it as a presage teaser thingy uh, when we're, I'm making the next series. Big Helium says Minus Calgar with bo Big Mummy Milkers. Ooh. See, I'm not even really objecting to that idea in general. Mm. It uh, it could work. <laughs> Horwitz, Feinberg and Horwitz says, Here's my head cannon. The 2nd and 11th Legion were made of female space marines. These two legions were expunged and no mention was made of them since. Who knows why? Maybe they couldn't parallel park and so they just uh, banished them to outer space. The Dark says, Morton Bailey argument, it's my, it's just my head cannon, so you can't attack it, as if I'm saying it's the cannon, but it should be the actual cannon, because. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Glory also says, considering that humans have a tendency to become mutants or psychers that fall to chaos regularly, so I could see Tao straight up culling humans to eliminate possibility of demon outbreaks. They can't just destroy planets like the Imperium. That's a good point, too, seeing as the Tau have no real understanding of the warp, if their human populace suddenly started calling forth tentacular monsters from beyond the void, I imagine that would make them a little bit, um, questioning as to the idea of accepting more humans into their little empire. Stru says Black Legion for the win. Uh, Tor Ordinson, these weirdos claim people are being gatekept out, and yet I am a Latino, and there were never Yahtzees at the door telling me I couldn't go in. Well, no, that's the thing. Warhammer was always for everyone, until they said Warhammer was for everyone. Then, it was for a certain group of people. Outraged Deer says the end times is chaos propaganda. I wish it was true. I hope it is true. I, I can believe in this headcanon. Mark Shamed says, never underestimate the 21st Legion and the Matriarch, who is stronger than Neos and all 20 of his Primarchs combined. Yeah, it's not just the Primaris either. There was, there was Erda too, and the Horus Heresy. Tragic. Ranger Hainlow says, he seems to be coming at the subject from the most negative, positive interpretation. Uh, po position interpretation. Women aren't Marines because they're being rejected because religion. Well, it's because he's viewing it from our world. It's like, oh, Christianity is intolerant, right? Therefore, uh, 40k, Christianity must be intolerant. Like, first and foremost, I don't think Christianity is actually very intolerant. And secondly, the Ecclesiarchy most assuredly isn't. Ranger Halo, uh, not Red uh, Whitehawk, Martin does actually talk about genetics in Azoifaf. Azoyaf? I'm guessing that's a sideboard source book or something. The plot hinges on Joffrey being identifiable as being not a Baratheon and being an incest baby. Oh, well, there you go. Good point. Pan's Raider says the two missing Primarchs could have been chicks. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, Marchand, forget the 20 Primarchs. The 10 Matriarchs are better. And that female Marines are twice as strong as Primaris. Ooh. Twice. Why not three times? Yeah, got to get that representation in there. Uh, Lord Commissar Smartin says, I shall posit the ass pull of the century, wherein one of the lost primarchs comes out of nowhere with a legion, and they're all women. Maybe, maybe it's just his harem. A Song of Ice and Fire. Okay, there you go. Thank you, chap. Maybe he was just an enormous sexist and wanted to be surrounded by nothing but women. I could see that. I am Macro Ifali, says there are no female space marines, only fat old space marines pretending to be female space marines under the armor. The internet argument, a valid one. 
Lord Metal Man says his tone on the video and on Twitter was very different and he is reaping what he sowed for it. He attacked the community and got what he deserved. Oh yeah. Now I, I am pretty sure that in his little echo chamber of fellow leftists, they were like, oh yeah, this'll this'll really own the Nazis on the interwebs. And then he posits his argument, and then he got raked over the coals and and butt raped and many other ways of sexual molestation, and then he figured to himself Maybe this wasn't actually such a good idea after all. Uh, Nathan Ailman says, Carl, the bait on the lolly question with Pastor Louis when? That would be a friendship ending debate, I think. Mark Shame says, but what if we could get trans trans space marines? Ooh. Trans 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 human space marines. They've just turned into power armor now, I guess. Uh, Prof. Sor... Sorrel John says, Space Marines being like, yeah, I am trans, male to alpha male. <laughs> that was pretty good. Might steal that. Uh, Michael Talpus, a lesson in capitalism for TI. Uh, don't block, monetize your haters. Well, that was if he was coming at this from a capitalistic viewpoint rather than a uh, butthurt little boy viewpoint. Anima Dacumon says, is it possible to convince the wider audience that your thing sucks? You wouldn't like it, now go away and leave me to my thing. I don't know, but I think we should try. Maybe that'll be the future. Once I'm done with 40k, I'll just start up another channel just talking about how 40k sucks. Yeah, yeah. I think well, that would be a good idea. Natsu Caliban says, Hey Arch, thanks for the lore videos. They make my work days go by a little faster and more enjoyable. Well, thank you, sir. It's good to know that I can help you get through the drudgery of everyday life. Much ashamed. Uh, Brendan Hoover, Sargon, Control F, Carl as well as I had a super chat. I looked for it, but I couldn't find it, my dude. Very sorry. I, I did check. I did Control F it, so blame YouTube. I'll be. I'm, in, I'm guiltless. I'm innocent. That was Aurelian. The Primarchs are male, and you would have to read into the law as to why they are and why their legions look like them. Source, decades of law. There are female space minis out there somewhere. Source, trust me, bro. I made it the fuck up. Glow in the Dark says, Sargon, you can say from a spiritual point of view that when you paint... up oh, read that one, yes. Uh, Danny D, just want to let you to know I appreciate the content both of you make. Thank you very much, sir. Tyler. Uh, Tyler uh, a, in this and the first stream, you referenced C.S. Lewis. Did you mean C.S. Goto? Goto, yes, that's probably yes. Goto, yes. What oh, is the Space Trilogy 40k canon now? Am I missing something else? No, C.S. Goto. It was a stupid name. Uh, Cole Fonch says, Sargon. I feel to point out that... Yep, yeah, right on. Uh, Lord Commander Spartan. Battletech is better setting anyway. Smug anime girl. Is it, though? Is it truly, though? Isn't it actually kind of stupid, though? I think it might be actually kind of stupid, though. Like big dumb robots that walk on legs, okay? Silly. Prince of Crows says, Dead by Daylight also has licensed characters like Pinhead, Ghostface, Nemesis, Pyramid Head, and Leatherface 2, plus a lot of lore to cover as well. Hmm. Oh, that's neat. Um, Brit says, Sargon, uh, are you lost to go into a uni tour? Right that one. Uh, Space Monkey 0899, I want an anime waifu sister of battle. It is canon. Well, so long as you have stated it, it must be real, which is the good part of this argument. Uh, Lazy Soda became a member. Congratulations, sir. You have joined an exclusive club of elite Primarchs. Yes, all of them. Nathan Hildeman, Sargon, the amount of upcharge. Sam Davis, big fan of your videos. I apologize if I've misinterpreted the, the topic of the stream. I don't want to know the best legal way we can fight back against this digital ID thing the government is trying to bring in. I don't know. Um, you should try blowing up Parliament. Don't, YouTube, but... <laughs> It, it, it kind of worked last time for Britain, you know, anyway. Uh, so John says, Sargon, would you ever do more of the speech to the public thing? I oh, read that one too. Uh, Emperor Cretin, uh, Cretin, tell DR me about why Primary sucks. I haven't had time to investigate it myself. Mostly because it's an ass poll excuse to sell Space Marines again. Because Space Marines were, of course, DW's best selling product, and so they needed to find some way to sell them all again. Because most people with Space Marines armies already had Space Marine armies. There's also the fact that when the God Emperor was that the one that made the Space Marines, 
That made the God Emperor and the Space Marines something greater. It made them both achievement. It made them both amazing by extension. It made the Emperor an absolute genius, and it made the Space Marines an unique achievement. Now that we know that some rando retard tech priest could do the exact same thing, but better, with a millionth of the resources, it undermines both achievements and reduces both the Emperor and the Space Marines. Mr. Luckness says, if these constant invasions of Warhammer fail, will the usual suspects try to interfere in other game settings like Battletech, War Machine, etc., etc.? They will, but only when they become popular enough to be worth their time. That's when you'll st start seeing the invasion really begin moving over in that direction. Navis Nobilite says, something about your setting is preventing me from asking you any questions in Super Chats. Really? Huh. Uh, trying to amp my YouTube channel about uh, TTBFG, still the best G game GW ever made, and we are trying to keep it alive. Well, uh, if you're interested... Uh... Battlefleet Gothic, that was it, yes. Uh, interested in Battlefleet Gothic, then check out Navis Nobilite. Uh, if you were trying to put a link in there, that might be it. YouTube hates links, despises it, so that might be it. Maleficus Shaikhan says something incredibly cringe along the lines of Eldar are the rightful rulers of the galaxy. Mm. That is weapons grade uh, cringe right there, son. Uh, Michelle Line says, imagine if Homer just kept retelling the Trojan horse part and nothing else of the Iliad and Odyssey. Except this time, it's a Trojan cow. And then it's a Trojan hamster. And then it's a Trojan cat. And then it's, it's just a Trojan. It's just a giant dude outside the gates like, hey, let me in. <laughs> that's, that's Batman right there. Uh, Kenrick50 says, uh, Sargon, who I am, uh, Ura, Urashima Otaru, says, good quality comics can be found at Comicsgate. That's true. At least they've got new stories to tell. WG101 says, and to think this ongoing war against the West all started to fall apart because we just wanted to play our <laughs> video games and keep our lord intact. Well, that is when we started fighting back. The war had been going for quite some time, but we had no idea we were under fire. Thank God for the dishonest nature of gaming journalism, I guess. Anod Ackerman says, I think it'd at least be funny if at the end of Velma, the actual Velma wakes up to reveal it was all a fever dream. It would at the very least get a chuckle out of me. <laughs> I will admit. It would still be an asshole way's end, but it would be at least a little funny. Rustin Noel says, guys, you need to check out the Horus Heresy game, much better than the 40k. Uh, maybe, maybe sometime. Motagorn says, could you do analysis of Caliban nationalism in 30k? Maybe, I would, uh, would require me to reread the Horus Heresy, which would take a while, but uh, possibly. The idea that uh, Caliban was being destroyed by the Imperium, stripping it of all of its raw resources, depriving it of its natural spirit, maybe. Easy E says, if women could be space marines, wouldn't all chapters want a marine who could birth new sources of gene seed? That'd be a massive resource. Well, certainly, I don't think the progenoid glands work quite like that. As I imagine, it would make them infertile. Magnus Lord says, a return to the Discord server, missing you reparti. Miss your repartoire. Ah, I'm too busy these days, man. I... Um, I hardly have time to post on Twitter. Hmm. Dark Invader says, As the lion seems to be a microcosm of the Emperor, as is his fall, doesn't it make more sense that Chaos is keeping the lion as a threat to them? Maybe, maybe. The, the entire end arc of the lion was always highly dissatisfying, so I would like to see them do something cool with him, but uh, I wouldn't hold my breath. Uh, Mr. Mr. Frenzy says, Arch, would the Raven Guard be a good choice for a first army to build? Sure, why not? They've got uh, they've got good mobility. The more b standard issue would be like just a basic Imperial Fist gun line, since it's easier to play, but um, Raven Guard are far from bad. And finally, Viking Kiwi says, how about Misters of Battle? 
the Misters of Battle are a bit of a, of a meme, yes. Male, uh, male, male Sisters of Battle. Why not? Why not? Well, of course, we know why not. It's because the hypocrisy only ever goes one way. They're allowed to demand anything and everything from us, and we are not allowed to uh, demand anything whatsoever from them. Mm. That is how things go. All right, now I, I'm going to wrap up so I can uh, get ready for doing a marathon stream of Dev 2. God damn you, not guys, ass button. Uh, says, I've started to prefer Battletech, to be honest. Also, you say robots are dumb, but knights? Okay, fair enough, you got me there. Also, next chance you have to listen to Texas video on Mackie. It has consistent and a realistic reasoning for why mechs are so important. Uh, short fat otaku says, don't forget to raid somebody, Arch. Uh, that's true, like a raid feature, ugh. Why do I need to do my thing? Why do I need... And look at this. Look at this chat. Look at this. Look at this chat. Look at it. You, you, you can't actually see it, but just picture it in your mind's eye, okay? No kib. Monetization. Green. No kib, no cry. No kib, no cry. All right. Is anybody else streaming right now? Um, It can't be kib. Okay. Rosa, then. I haven't raided Rosa in absolute ages, so we'll raid Rosa, and uh, I am also going over to Dev's channel to do a watch-along of The Last of Us in around about an hour, so that is that as well. Do check out the Communist's channel, I believe his name on YouTube is Short Fat Communist. And, uh... We will be now sending you over to the Snake Rosa, because I wasn't allowed to refer anybody to Kyle. It's a bit cruel, but I blame Dev for this. It's not my fault, you know. Uh, then again, you know, no, no kib, no cry, so maybe he deserved it. Until next time, thank you all very much for watching, for hanging out today, and for all the super generous super chats, and I will see you guys all again soon. Until next time, have a good day.